nyar. British cat boys be like nyar. <laughs> I didn't even say nyar. I said yeah. Oh, is, have you guys played the new Xenoblade? Because I'm sure that's how they sound. Nyar. <laughs> Actually, in that in that game, uh, they make all of the the cat folk um, Welsh. like Welsh, good, which is great. I mean, well, that, I, that on... really was the saving grace of Xenoblade Two, wasn't it? They've in the the new game, they've got um, uh, uh, some like feather, like wing eared person, and she's very much like oh, about the water. Like, that's just how she talks. It's great. Like, single-handedly make me go, do I buy Xenoblade? I don't think you do, Will. No, I don't, I don't think, think you would do. like it. I I, I played um, Chronicles X, and I enjoyed it up to a point. It wasn't even, like, story or gameplay-wise was the problem. For me, it, like, the map was so shit, I couldn't understand how to get to a location. So from stop. my understanding, Xenoblade Chronicles X is very different from the other Xenoblade games. Yeah. 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 Crop that screen cap. Get it. How do you know I'm doing? I might. I'm... I don't ask questions. Yeah. I might. I might watch like a playthrough of it though, or at least the cutscenes. Seems like a good turn your brain off, having in the background sort of thing. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm playing a game with my buddies, and I got myself uh, a nice Dublin 1891 grapefruit crate, uh, craft soda. It's very good. I, I want to be. I want to be in high spirits and happy and excited about this. I'm trying so so hard, but true to form, I am Monsieur Tambihati. No. I'll try. I'll force myself through it. All right. I'll throw up if I have to. <laughs> I'll do it. Watch me, except don't, because that's kind of gross. Unless you want to. <laughs> oh, fucking stop. <laughs> stop! <laughs> oh, this is me. Uh, the man who claimed you should have told me that we were starting. <laughs> Are we good to start? He, he yes, said. I said. <laughs> Wow, I didn't even hear you. What the fuck? Okay. The man who claimed to be an inspector of that day was definitely not this man. Uh, messing with volume things. I think the music is too loud. Okay. He's right, see? You think we would have forget these grand leaps, huh? I never leave Fresno Street, all right? I've no interest in any red-headed league. I'm all alone in the world, me. I've no kinfolk and nothing. Why would I be involved in something like that? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Just look at me, eh? Does it look like I carry off a disguise with a face like this? That's yes. a good point. He is ugly. Guilty. No. It would certainly appear that we have the wrong man. Uh, what have I been telling you, eh? There was no need for this pointless testimony. Uh, That's right. I'm just a simple peddler. Remember, Fresno Street's all I know. How would I have come by a police inspector's identification book, eh? Well, yes, that's hard to explain, but... Mm. A brief cross-examination, I think, Council. Very brief. Uh, isn't there anyone in this courtroom who thinks I might be on to something? I am drinking water. I stand steadfastly at your side always, Mr. Naruhoto. Mm. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. I mean, I smart to press everything. Mm -hmm. So you say, but how can you be quite so certain? There is no need to hurt your hands on the desk, monsieur. Surely the reason is obvious, no? Because I have never before seen lips like this. Nevertheless, there's a clear red mark around Mr. Gossip's neck, and it looks very much like the mark that... What? Oh. Like that left behind on the neck of your colleague by your prized collar. Mon dieu! With your words, it is like you try to wring my neck! It does look very much like my neck, though, eh? 
No, no, this is a birthmark, lad. Got me umbilical cord around me. The umbilical cord, yeah! <laughs> the biggest lips in London and a neck to die for. Oh, they broke the mold when they made me. <laughs> At least this guy's owning it. <laughs> for the first time in my life, I am in love. <laughs> I feel lucky to have been born with red hair. And I thought being Japanese made you stand out in London. So you maintain that you've never seen this man before? Oui, c'est ça. I saw to it by the flames of my hair. So fierce pride has outgrown the frustration with your hair now, has it? I'm a little baby. Hold it. You press me and I go, ooh, like a little man on the door. And I go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yes, well, I don't imagine I'll forget those lips in a hurry either. That is what I'm saying. For some reason, it makes me want to eat the uh, Harry Fabian, I call it, an eclair. <laughs> you know, I've never, you know, I've never seen the hair as black as yours before either. Likewise, I've never seen red hair like yours until I came to Britain. See, maybe it's a national trait, huh? Maybe all the people from this man's country have the grand lips. Would you? Britain? No. <laughs> Well, you see, it's true. British people have huge lips. It actually, normal, like, normal people, not <laughs> British people, are born with taste buds, but Brits, all of them move to the lips when they're born, so they inflate. And that's why their food is like that. That's okay. rough. <laughs> no, lad, I was born right here on Fritz New Street, and I've never left. Oof, that is the problem, see? Ch Cello, that's racist. Are we- is there no target more acceptable than the British Empire? <laughs> than the Brits. <laughs> you wanna look at me and defend British cuisine? You wanna look at me and defend the water Savvy sandwich? Savvy just appears out of- Savvy just appears out of the ether to say no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you, so, you definitely didn't go to the park on Lime Street that day, Mr. Gossip. Now how many times do you want me to say it, eh? Alright. So, you've heard of the red-headed le headed league, have you? It'll take a while before I'm actually in reading mode. My eyes are woogling. You good. Whoa! You don't get a name like Gossip for nothing, eh? It's my business to know what's going off and down. I saw that tasty tidbit to a fair few redheads that came past me. Just between us, I even got sandwich to cough up for it. Damn. Well, he does have a very red nose, if that counts. You never know, Beppo might have been a redhead in his younger days. You just haven't seen what is under my hat, reveals a lobster. Who knows? But as you can see, my own hair's not got a hint of red in it. And in any case, Fresno Street's my patch. <laughs> you won't catch me sliding off to some other part of town, no sir, not likely. How do you new do my name's gossip? This is my people, them's my patch. Pursue. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mr. Excuse De uh, can I help you? No, sorry. Did Mr. Gossip's words just now lead you to remember something relevant, perhaps? Dots. It was the other day when I was looking for a place near the park, a small house or something. You know, I just found a way that this man could be maybe like 3% more of a sieve design, is if instead of... The, the eyelashes are close. But if they were like mm -hmm. big, thick white eyelashes with outlines around them the whole way around, cookie you know? rod eyelashes. Yeah. <laughs> to be the <clears throat> to be the headquarters of your redheaded Lee, yes. I visited an housing agent on Lime Street, and there I saw him. Hold on, I need to turn Will down. It's too resonant. Uh, weird. Resonant evil. Uh, Mon amour. Uh, this man was paying money to the agent. What? What? M Mr. Gossip, with a housing agent? In this you economy? You live in places? 
We, he had some kind of contract in his hand and uh, they were clearly discussing terms. No, 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 you mistaken, chum. I've never left Fresno Street. Me, like I said before. <laughs> You've mistaken me for someone else, someone with the same face. No, no, the couple is right, I remember it too. He was paying the man with the banknotes. With notes? Like I said, that was... Was it me? That one just went by itself. I was curious why this man with the dirty clothes had so much money, so I looked at the name on the papers. And what name was written? Mr. Gossip? No. No, no, this man, he lies. He tells you he has no name. But in fact, his name is Hilbuna. It's better than Mr. Gossip, I think. See? Found it. No! No. <laughs> I'm a pair of tidbits of information, like I said, on Fresno Street, and that's that. I, I don't much like folk talking about my personal life. All right, hypocrite, your name is Gossip. He, indeed. And it is not the intention of the court to invade the privacy of witnesses. What? Very well, I shall respect your wishes, sir. The aforementioned name shall what? be redacted from all court records what? of this trial, assuming no objections. Ob Judge, Ob are you fucking high? Object. I'm sorry, my lord, but the defense does object because the name just mentioned has a very deep significance to this case. Oh, good gracious! Do you similarly object, Prosecutor Asugi? As it happens, my lord, that particular name has already been mentioned during today's proceedings. If you paid you any attention. attention, well, I yeah. never. In <laughs> what? Oh, Judge. sorry, I've been playing Candy Crush on my phone. I hate it here, really. Judge, you are the only one who's going to hand down the verdict. You need to listen if you're going to adjudicate this properly. Adjudicate what? The name of the leaseholder of the room. Hugh Boone. <laughs> I don't even know what I mean by this. Hugh Boone is the name of a backstory character in a Bioshock game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me put this very simply. The victim's body was discovered in your wanted womb. What? Oh, womb? Oh. I suggest, sir, that you start talking. Oh, he angry. <laughs> well, all right. I suppose that might be the case. So, <laughs> I'll stick my bum out. So your real name is Hugh Boone. Well, just between us, I don't like to blow my own trumpet, but there's no fun a peddler of tidbits in town. So, I happen to be able to afford a grubby little room in a fallen down back street townhouse. You do. And once every six months, I go and pay the rent to the agent on Lime Street. I, I remember now, there were two vulgar redheads there last time. Huh? If either of us is a vulgar, it's not a me. Oh, it is me. <laughs> Sink again, Pepino. I'm a dirty little slut. <laughs> Why didn't you bring this up before? Well, it didn't come up. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. I don't like to talk about my personal life, is it? <laughs> like I told you already. I don't like talking about my personal life. I'm a tidbit peddler. I'm going to keep saying this line and nothing else. I love Good doing gracious. this thing. We will update your testimony to include this most surprising. Blah, blah, blah. Dots. Put it Before in the notes. So, the leaseholder Scotland Yard has been looking for since the body was discovered has been here under our noses all along. Much like your awful lips. Alright. <laughs> Hold it. Hold it. Um, so. You live in that room, presumably, do you? Oh, no, I don't live there. What do you think? There's no bed, is there? It's just a disc. Then why would you want to rent it? Well, uh, I don't think I should have to say, really. You what? are in court. I, I don't want to. Then how about the notice board in there? Hiya, Luca. Which was covered from top to bottom in confidential documents only the police should have access to. Hi, Alucard. I just pictured Al like crawling up your torso directly in front of you and going, You just 
opening your mouth all the way like a cartoon, Ow. and Al walking inside like a train into a tunnel. <laughs> Uh, no, that ball's not mine. The inspector must have brought it along. It's only the other bits and bobs that belong to me. The desk and the chair and that. Um, people don't generally carry oh, enormous... Oh, that's cute. He's got a picture of his wife in there. That's cute. <laughs> Just, they don't normally carry enormous notice boards along with them. The real question is, why was Inspector Gregson killed there in your room? We're obviously... Obviously, I've not the faintest idea. I mean, it's causing me no end of bother, to be honest. This guy could not be more suspicious. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It seems to me that Mr. Gossip... Uh, sorry, Mr. Prune would rather as little is known about his room as possible for some reason. Like, can you imagine being on a trial where just, like, a normal person, like... Where the judge is being like, ah, oh, yes, just my opinion decides whether you're innocent or guilty in this matter. It's just like, yeah, so I didn't mention it, but I do own the location where the body was found. Uh, we'll not tell you why I rent it. We'll not tell you why uh, I didn't mention it. I'm assuming it. it's irrelevant. Don't <laughs> talk to me. It's like, got it. Yes, it does come across that way. And more importantly, knowing that the scene of the crime is actually his room completely changes things. In particular, there's one part of his testimony that's really bothering me now. Oh. That's how I'm finally going to undo this man. <laughs> Just starts unraveling him like a ball yarn. <laughs> okay. No kinfolk or nothing? Not about your wifey? Oh uh, yeah. The, the Green picture of the wife. Graph. Sorry. Green, yeah, nope. Last. One more. First page. First page. Okay. First page. The photograph of his wife. There. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Objection. Objection. If you have no kinfolk, as you put it, then explain why it is among the, the sparse furnishings we found this photograph in the room. Oh! Uh I presume, as you've been renting the room, that this photograph belongs to you, does it not? Oh, uh, we are well. Mr. Boone, drop the pretense and tell the court exactly who you really are. I, I don't know what what you mean. I'm a peddler. I keep telling you so. You really don't need to bother with me. Please just, just leave it alone. As the man says, leave it alone. Whatever the truth is about this man's life, it has no bearing on this case. Are you fucking high? Because it's simply not possible that he impersonated Inspector Gregson. All right, Cosimo, come down from that moon. I I like to imagine that, like, legitimately, in other games, the, the prosecutor will just be like, I'm just an obstacle because that's my job and I want someone to get convicted and someone not to. But I genuinely think Cosimo has suffered long-term brain damage and no one is acknowledging it yet and he actually is not in control of his faculties. The dude had amnesia for, like, months and was fucking mm, mm. bumbling around the back streets of London and Shanghai mm. or Hong Kong. To be fair to Cosma and the judge, they don't know anything about Daily like we do. So they're That's like, we're just, prying, we're just prying into this guy's random life for no reason. It's yeah. like, yeah, he rented the room, but it's, I don't know. It's not, yeah. that's not really damning yet. The fact it's that he's being suspicious is, but the fact that we're prying into his personal life is a little strange, yeah, so I don't right think it's that, that weird. You're right about that, but it's kind of contrived and just like, this is a little needless on the writer's part. Yeah. I, not, I, not I, really. I don't think it's that unrealistic. Yeah, I, also, they're, they're pushing past it pretty quickly. Yeah. How can you be so sure? Just look at the man. No amount of disguise could ever hide those unmissable features lips are the disguise, dude. But what if we were to look at this the other way around? What do you mean? Yes, counsel, what do you mean? Well, there's no denying that Mr. Boone's lip is very prominent indeed, but consider the possibility that his prominent lip is itself part of an elaborate disguise. <clears throat> then hiding that prominent feature, in other words, revealing his true face, would make an utterly impenetrable disguise. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Hugh Boone? 
<laughs> Witness! Are you still hiding the truth from this court? Yes, you guys. He, we've, he had the dead body in a flat he rented for no other reason for a purpose he won't tell us. Where is the surprise uh, coming in? Put I, one and I one together, judge. I don't like this. Hugh Boone, you can go now. You can go home. Kazuma, <laughs> you don't have the authority to do that. No, I agree. Let him go. It's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> if, if, if that's a disguise, then underneath it, his true identity must be... Yes, that's right. There's really only one person he could be. My lord... The defense believes it can reveal Mr. Boone's true identity to the court. No, please, no. Very well, then, counsel. What is the true identity Branson. of this peddler who goes simply by the name of gossip on the street? That's my brother, Clint. <laughs> Your real name is actually Mr. Ver uh, Mr. Vigil, isn't it? Mr. Daily Vigil. <laughs> I don't recall that name, Counsel. Who is Mr. Vigil? Don't worry, Judge. Even if we had mentioned it, you probably wouldn't remember it. Oh, it's look, they only, uh, they only said Hugh Boone once. Yeah, but, but like, it was right. important. But who? And it, it's... Go ahead, Will. I was just saying, but who's the judge? Who's the <laughs> judge? And, like, they, they made it very clear. It's like, this is a big thing in the current ongoing investigation for this high-profile murder of Scott, one of Scotland Yard's bests. And the judge is like... They did, when, they did when we were investigating, but when it came up in court, they were like, oh, it's rented to this guy who seems to have no bearing on the case. So they were like, okay, moving on. Well, no, and then it like, didn't come up again. They were like, we're actively searching for him. It's fine. It's a name I encountered yesterday, my lord. It has to do with a certain, oops, I'm very bad at this, certain client of Mr. Herlock Sholmes. A young gentlewoman came to the detective asking him to locate her missing husband. The woman in this photograph, in fact. This is Mrs. Vigil. What? From what I understand, you haven't returned home since the night before the inspector was found dead. Uh. But of course, on that night, you were being held captive by the two red-headed league men. And last night, you were put up to the prosecution service in preparation for the trial. Sorry. Because we'd been... Uh, uh, in preparation... Yeah. Uh, because we'd been led to believe that you, Miss Venus, and Mr. Sandwich were all homeless. These names. Being important witnesses in this case, we needed to know where we could find you, of course. And that explains why you've not only been unable to return home, but also unable to contact your wife who's been beside herself with worry, waiting for you at the Vigil residence. No, just you hold on a minute! What I'm talk- I'm- the game did that, not Jello. What I'm talking about, really. It's a simple enough matter to confirm my suspicions. All we have to do is pull off that disguise. No, please. I really do just look like this. Bailiff, bring soap, a sponge, and a wash bowl at once. For some reason, I imagine fucking Van Zeke's coming in with, like, a little soapy cloth, like, all right, sit still. <laughs> Mr. Tiberso, Mr. DeRozzi, you will restrain the witness. <laughs> Do we, you, know no, you have cops for that? We have bailiffs, Judge. I'm very bad at Good my job. Comment in chat. Bailiff, whack his lip! <laughs> we, my See, lord. my lord. Uh, you, you two, restrain him. You have you experience. You are my new best friend. <laughs> Pepino never let you go. You are my new punching bag. <laughs> don't! It's clearly don't. Do it! Is he beautiful? No. No. Oh. Aww. Aww. Yeah. <gasps> you look like a pretty good disguise. Right? Golden Kamui. He does, yeah. Well, we are now seeing your true features, I presume. Good gracious, you killed Mr. Gossip! Where'd you get those clothes? <laughs> what? He was Lift hiding your... them. <laughs> Lift your head, sir, so the core can see your face. Mm. It would appear that the defense counsel's assertion was entirely correct. This has all been a very elaborate deception. So, witnesses, tell the court. Have you seen this man before? I... I don't believe it, but... 
See, there is no question. This is the inspector we saw in the park. Extraordinary! On the day of the Red-Headed League enrollment, the man claiming to be Inspector Gregson, who appeared before Mr. De Rousseau and Mr. De Rossi in the park, was you, disguised as the inspector, or rather, was you posing as the inspector in no disguise at all? Mr. Vigil was formerly employed as the chief warder at Barclay Prison. I like how he's chief really warder. silent now. And your career had promise. Why would you quite possibly have... Why you would quite possibly have become the future governor of the prison? What on earth have you been doing peddling tid tittle-tattle in Fresno Street? Well, it's been ten years since Mr. Vigil worked at the prison. Ten years? I'm... I'm really dreadfully sorry about all of this. Yes, it's true. I'm Daily Vigil. And you were the chief warder at Barclay... Barclay Prison ten years ago. Hmm. So where did he, Mr. Hugh Boone come from? Boone is... the other me. It's a name I invented. Well, evidently, there's a great deal under the surface here. Who is this Boone you speak of? <laughs> I'll explain everything. I'll tell you just how wretched my life has become. I have a lot of- My still wife- got a, Still got a hot wife, though. That's pretty alright. And I'm rich. As you say, it was ten years ago now that my employment as Barclay's chief warder came to an end. What is this music? Is he gonna reveal he's a pirate? Aye! That I be! Having left the prison service, I searched for some new occupation by which to earn a wage. But times were hard in London, and I found no suitable engagements at all. In desperation one day, I turned my hand at selling wares on Fresno Street. But your wife appears to know nothing of this. She still maintains that you are the chief warder at Barclay Prison. I was utterly determined that my wife should not know of my failings, which is why I've never told her. I opened an account at the bank under the name of Hugh Boone, and I rented the cheapest room I could find on Fresno Street. The scene of the very crime we're investigating. Yes, that's right. No. Oh. The place from which I could emerge every morning at eight has a squalid peddler and transform myself back every evening at five into a well-dressed man about town before returning home. That quickly became my daily routine. I was puzzled by the lack of furniture in the room, but that explains it. But why on earth didn't you just tell us this in the first place? I have a wife, sir, and two sons. And without wishing to sound self-conceited, they regard me with some pride. Are you really managing to, like, maintain this household on the, a peddler's salary? That's honestly impressive. Two I sons, I can barely tolerate one. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to disappoint them. So instead, you decided to conceal your occupation from them? Yes. I've made such a terrible mess of everything. Still, one thing doesn't add up. No matter how many titbits of information you could sell to passing gentlemen, even at six pence apiece, you couldn't hope to match the salary you must have commanded as a chief warder at the prison. True. To have kept your family in comfort, despite ten years of somewhat misbegotten employment. Hmm. That was all thanks to Inspector Gregson. What? Inspector Gregson? What on earth? It was some years after I had invented Boone and begun my other life as a street seller. What do you mean it was some years after? How did you provide How many? He, he, the inspector that is, recognized me one day. You mean to say the victim was an acquaintance of yours? <laughs> Comment in chat. Man's got an OnlyFans. Leave him alone. <laughs> I knew him from my time working at the prison. His OnlyFans account is called Lip Service. <laughs> oh, 
when he saw what I'd become, he was deeply troubled for me and my family. Then from that day forward, he visited me on Fresno Street with increasing regularity. Then, one day, he asked me if I would carry out a secret assignment for him. A, a secret? What was it? I love secrets. It was a secret. I was to pose to impersonate the inspector. What? Impersonate him? Yeah, why, why is he posing like Eggy Boy? That's just kind of how Weird. everybody in this game and the last one moves ambiently. Weird. We always met in that little room so the inspector could brief me. Visit Oxy's tomorrow That's... and take a statement from the proprietress. It was always something along those lines. Surveillance work, interviewing people. On those occasions, he would lend me his identification so people would believe who I was. My instructions were to make an impression, to let people know that in Inspector Gregson had been at work. And for those services, he compensated me financially. Scotland Yard Inspector willingly relinquished his identification into your care with intent to deceive? The, as I'm sure I need not point out, is a very serious criminal offense. But why? What was the point of you impersonating him? I... I truthfully do not know all I can say. Just that the inspector warned me on numerous occasions. Now remember, Vigil, I need your solemn word. You don't blab about this to anyone, alright? Ever. Even if... Well, if I end up a croaker. I broke my promise. He became a frog. <laughs> Ribbit. In time, he started to bring papers with him to the room as well. It became something of a second office for him. I'd like some fish and chippets. So, <laughs> in fact, the person who declared himself to be Inspector Gregson at the park on Lime Street was really... Yeah, we know. Yes, it was me, acting on the inspector's orders. As usual, I removed my boot disguise, and then I went in as instructed to the park, armed with the inspector's identification book. It never occurred to me that the bruise on my neck might give me away. Yeah, we knew a lot of this. Boom. Dots. Good comment in chat. Feed him a chip to turn him back into a prince. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would seem this confession completely destroys the defense's case. What? Uh, explain yourself, Prosecutor Asugi. My learned friend's assertion was as follows. Can you not call me that? The victim was, was killed at another location on the day before his corpse was discovered at the hands of these two red-headed league men when they imprisoned the inspector. Ow. Ow! Ow! But no, that can't be! Is he... you know... You know... European? Yes, he <laughs> is! After all, it wasn't the inspector who went to the park that day, it was me. Oh, goodness. Finally, we have clarity. We had nothing to do with the murder of the inspector. We were busy beating the shit out of this guy. <laughs> and merci, Monsieur de la Defense, for providing it. What? Ah! Oh, fuck! This invisible baseballer constantly hitting me in the chest. No, that's my bat with a bat. Come back here. He loves baseball. What? <laughs> Did it appear that we have reached a de facto conclusion of sorts? These witnesses had no involvement in the murder of the victim, as proven somewhat ironically by the defense. Uh, I hereby call an end to the cross-examination. Hold it! <gasps> huh? Pardon me, my lord, but with your permission, I would like to pose one further question to the witness. Cosima? What question, counsel? 
It concerns the events of 10 years ago. I believe you would have been present at a very significant execution that was carried out at the time. Uh, 10 years ago? The execution of the professor, Genshin Asugi. I want to know exactly what your involvement was. Oh. That's irrelevant to the case, Kazuma. Answer me, man! Uh, One moment, counsel. Is this related to the current case? No. Naturally. Elaborate? It is the prosecution's belief that this case and the events of ten years ago... <laughs> Elaborate? I choose not to, since apparently <laughs> that's allowed. That sounds good. ...are inextricably linked. Hmm. Does the defense concur, counsel? Cosima, you're not yourself. You're not as calm and collected as usual. Poor Cosima-sama! I'm sorry! I've dropped my ring! Poor Cosima-sama! No wonder he's acting this way. Mr. Virgil's memories of what happened ten years ago... ...would tell the tale of Genshin Asugi's last moments. His own father... I know, I do understand that, but even so... Kaz... Prosecutor Asagi. Hmm? Do you genuinely believe that this question requires an answer in order to learn the truth behind Inspector Gregson's death? I need you to trust me. Please. I honestly don't have a good reason to. Very well. Then the defense has no objection. I see. In that case, you will answer the question, witness. Uh, the, the truth is... I remember very little of that time. You've forgotten?! I'm sorry to say, yes. It's been ten fucking years, bro. As I said, I resigned from my role at the prison ten years ago. But for some peculiar reason, my memory of the events leading up to that moment is extremely hazy. I got shot in the fucking head in the graveyard. It was nuts. I have no memories. Does that not strike you as strange, Mr. Nareodo? Sorry? Well, hello, Alucard. Oh, look at you. Get out of the way. But to have forgotten the reason why he left such an important job. Yes, you're right. And not only that, Mr. Vigil's claim contradicts what we already know. The human spirit is a fragile thing. It's broken all too easily. They which is why... With spaghettium. We have a tendency to wrap it up with, for protection. So, sorry, the human spirit? I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean. When we experience pain and suffering that we feel unable to bear, we block it out, obliterate it from our memories, seal it away. But it never truly leaves us. If the seal is broken, the memories resurface. We just need to use psyche locks. <laughs> <laughs> and when they do, that fragile spirit may finally be crushed. But, but I really don't. Kazuma-sama. But if it must be crushed, then so be it! Because the truth will not stay buried! It's coming out, one way or another! Oh, finally! Oh. <laughs> hmm. Huh? Right. Now I understand. It's clear what his intentions are. He means to expose the truth at any cost. Perhaps if I pointed out the contradiction in what Mr. Vigil claimed earlier, it might cause some crucial memories to return to him. But should I? Should I present the evidence or not? I don't even know what the evidence is, to be honest, because we stopped at a weird point in this case. Um, is, it, is it something to do with what... His termination um, papers. Yeah, I think the termination papers. Yeah. Uh, Should be near the beginning. Letter yeah, dismissal eight. notice. Violated cause... Aiding and abetting. One, yeah. yeah, aiding the escape. Yeah. All right. Sure. Do it. Do it. I have no idea how this is going to go, but this is a court of law, and I have a duty to pursue the truth. Mr. Vigil, I'd like you to look at this. It's evidence that clearly contradicts your version of events. This wig. <laughs> wig. Oh, no, not sis. that. 
Just a few moments ago, you made the following statement. I resigned from my role at the prison ten years ago. Uh, well, yes. In other words, you claim to have left the post of Chief Warder on your own of your own volition. Well, yes, of course. Why? Tell me, do you remember seeing this document before? N no, no, I don't. This is a dismissal notice, ordering the immediate termination of a prison staff member's employment. A dismissal notice? And the name on the notice is yours, Mr. Vigil. What? What? It's... it's... Uh, m mine? So you didn't resign from the prison service at all? For some reason, you were dismissed as Chief Warder from Barclay. This guy's like... Something about his face and the way he talks. It's just like, do you recognize this? Dot, dot, dot. Like, it's very JoJo Part 8 yes. to me. No, mm -hmm. I don't. This, this dismissal notice. It is your dismissal notice. Your name is on it. <laughs> Daily Vigil. My that name. is your name. My name. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> it's, Ugh. it's Friday. Oh, finally, Friday. Yes, Friday. <laughs> no, there's there's been some mistake. I'm I'm sure. I'm sure I tendered my resignation. This dismissal notice is nonsense. Uh, uh, it's an, it. If you were forcibly dismissed, there must have been a good reason. Clearly, you did something. God, if only one of these five lines of dialogue on this piece of paper said what it was. Mr. Vigil, it's time to break the seal and have you remember. Why are you being so dramatic? Just, God. Oh, sorry. Woo! According to the few remaining rec records, the final execution that you su supervised was on 17th June, 10 years ago. And on that day, something very serious took place at Barclay Prison. The 17th of June. What? What's that? The professor's execution. Professor. As you were the chief warder at the time, it stands to reason that you would have been present throughout the proceedings. Oh. It, it does sound familiar. And yet, that execution never took place. I'm just a little guy! I'm just a little guy! The convict ostensibly executed earlier that day later re-emerged from his grave. Oh, that's scary! The convict came back to life? In the cemetery in the middle of the night, there was a witness. A witness? However, the witness claims that a moment after he saw the convict clambering out of his grave, a gunshot ran out from over his shoulder. It ran out? You know what I mean. Give me a moment. Bullet had shoes and kicked him. Yes. The bullet pierced the professor's chest, killing him instantly. Those may have been the professor's actual last moments. Yes. Yes. Yeah, very part eight. Seeing as you were in charge of overseeing executions at the time, you must know the truth about the, what really happened. It's in your head, somewhere deep down. Well, Chief Warder Daily Vigil, I know there are memories in your head that can explain what happened on 17th June, 10 years ago. And now it's time for you to drag them up. Why are you being so melodramatic about your phrasing? Because my dad died. Ugh. My dad's dead. My dad's dead. Oh. Mr. Vigil. Oh, headachey. Yes, the whole prison. It was complete chaos. The prisoner escaped. He was killed in the cemetery with the candelabra. The shocking news ripped through the Barclay like a hurricane. What? What? What do you mean? Why? Why are you surprised? It's on the piece of paper that we have. Order! 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 D 
You mean to say, Mr. Vigil, that your memories of the time have returned? There was no reason yeah, for this part at all. Why are we doing what? this? Ed, it's... Why is this happening? What part? What does this do for the story? I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, why, why did we not just have him be like, yeah, I lied? It's like some floodgates have been opened. The images, the screams. Oh, my goodness. The papers. There were reports, articles about a man who'd seen a ghost. Yes, Enoch Trevor. But, but surely those reports were exaggerated. There were traces at the scene. Traces of what? Ectoplasm! Ah! <laughs> In Lowgate Cemetery, a pl plot number 139. Blood. Lots of blood. That's where the man was buried, of course. Obviously, something terrible had happened there. The depths of conspiracy and depravity from which this tale is emerging are quite staggering. Actually, it's just what we already knew. <laughs> I've reviewed the police records from that time extensively. A thorough investigation was conducted by Scotland Yard to ascertain how the convict managed to escape in the first place. And the conclusion reached by the investigating team was... I don't know. ...that a member of the prison staff must have been involved. You suggesting that a prison warder abetted the man's bid for freedom? Yeah, we have a fucking piece of paper that says it. We we know this. Yes, yes, and I, I was suspected of doing it. Of using <laughs> the mess murderer's execution so, as a so, way to help him escape. Someone in chat, well, the escape part was new. Second page. Was Abetting it? The was it new? <laughs> hey, man, I didn't see that fucking cat door on the door. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> We literally had to present this to do this. This is so weird. You did what? I did something bad. I remember now the horror of it all is coming back to me. Don't you understand what? why I'm revolving so much? Because much like La Lune around the earth, I too am a moon. I, no, don't you see? I'm actually a clock. I'm rewinding time so I can see it again. <laughs> <laughs> One evening, a few days after the execution, some detectives came to the prison. I was called to the governor's office at the top of the watchtower. Are we speeding up? We're going to blow up the moon. I don't think it's white. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daly. This is a serious business. But I can I help you know. As chief warder, you were responsible for overseeing the execution of four, eh? Goodbye. I'm here now. Instant like transmission. <laughs> Teleports in front of you. Well, it seems the fellas at Scotland Yard want to have a few wee words with you about it. You'd better pack your things, laddie. You're to attend in person. As soon as he told me that, my mind just went completely blank. And, and the next thing I knew, I... hit my head on that fucking clock! <laughs> the professor, the most hated killer in our country's history. And I let him escape. I'm finished. My life. Oh. oh, bro. Okay. Oh, to be shit. fair, it is a pretty high fall from the moon. You're right. I guess this is just supposed to be the breakdown, and they're just trying to set it up and make it dramatic. I don't know. Order! Order! Bailiff! Fetch a doctor at once! Order! Order! Mr. DeRusso! Mr. DeRussi! Please go get a doctor! <laughs> no, don't worry. I have a bat just for the job. Dr. Acula, please help him! Okay! Hits him with a metal bat. Shut up, Will! <laughs> Court is adjourned for today with immediate effect. So, with Mr. Vigil's collapse, Proceedings came to an abrupt end for the day. You guys, despite being theater kids, sure seem to hate theatrics, huh? A, I think I'm the only theater kid out of the four of us. B, technically, me and Amy were technically. Did you guys do theater stuff? I did not know that. Yeah. I'm I'm not annoyed by the drama. I'm annoyed by the needless everyone going oh information yeah. we already knew 
and literally had to have already known to make this presentation. Once again, overshadowed by the legacy of that notorious killer, appearing like a cursed ghost ship on a foggy... Lord Van Zeeks, Mr. Vigil, Cosima, and Gregson, all of them bound by invisible chains anchored to the same wreckage in the murky depths of the past. But the miraculous light that had been trying to cut through the gloom Me practicing and my poetry. Those tragic events <laughs> was playing on the edges of the truth at law. At law. At law. At law. At law. Yeah, no, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine for dramatics. The problem is, is if your dramatic buildup involves shit that we already know. And everyone acts like a surprise. And like it's on the piece of paper. And it's never been like an unforgivably huge thing, but there were like two or three instance of, instances of that in the last two cases. And we're like, why does it keep doing this? Cause, like, you know, if you wanted to have the same effect, all you'd have to do is be like, I, I didn't want to talk about this because it would incriminate me for a lot of things, but I, I can't remember what happened at the end of the night and that's where you can have the amnesia because he jumped out of a fucking window that's your big reveal and surprise that's mm -hmm. fine but the whole buildup of like i don't know why i didn't do the job is like, it's fucking dumb i still can't quite believe what just happened i know i inquired with the bailiff after the court session was adjourned and it seems mr fisher was taken to hospital to recover right remember me Ten years ago now, Mr. Vigil attempted to commit suicide by jumping out of the window of the prison governor's office. But ever since then, he's completely blocked the memory of those events from his mind. I don't think this is me. This, no, I think no, it's I think... Nobody knew his secret, not his family, <laughs> not even the man himself, but I. <laughs> I forced it out I, into the open. Was I it... love that your Sean Connery starts with like a oh, big oh. bubble. Because yes. that's how he has to do it. He's got a little mumble in his mouth. <laughs> He's a mute. Here's my audition for Sebastian the Crab in the Little Mermaid. <laughs> Under worse. the sea. Bup, 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 bup. Under the sea. <laughs> I, I told you I can't do it, Sean Connery. Um, was it wrong of me to do that? Did I overstep the mark, I wonder? Was it really okay to stop Thomas Baby Eater, Baby inventor Eater. of Man. eating babies? <laughs> Probably. Bruno! Yeah. Bruno! <laughs> I have such a clear image of him in my head, like, skipping daintily with his enormous body and thunderous footfalls. <laughs> Oh, Iris. You're miles away! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've been a fresh pot of soothing tea for you. Oh, thank you. You and Susie have had an exhausting day so far, haven't you? I mean, to, I mean, to be fair, you drug up trauma from uh, for info we could have found from other sources. No, we dug up info we already had from a man who had inexplicably forgotten it, despite being the one who should know it the most. Anyway. Oh, I said it already. Oh, Thank I know. you, Iris. How thoughtful of you. Oh. No problem. Oh. <laughs> Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is? When we I went out. Of... Him. Oh, thank God. When we went out of the courtroom back into the defendant's antechamber, he had disappeared. Oh, no. I don't know. He just suddenly sprang to his feet and left, and all he said was, I must leave! <laughs> I wonder if he's pursuing the mystery of Inspector Gregson's death. Adjusting the volume thing. Oh, fine. Hmm. Well, you know what Hurley's always saying, don't you? There are mysteries in his world that should perhaps never be solved. For the construction of a solution comes only at the expense of the destruction of something else. What does that mean? He knows very well that when you open someone else's old wounds, you often open your own too. But you just can't take his own advice and leave well alone. Solving mysteries is too important to him. 
That's so true, girl. So true. Hashtag truth. But that's what I like about Hurley after all. What a meaningless hashtag. <laughs> hashtag true. Hashtag not false. Just like you, like, who is that for? Like, who is just going on Twitter and being like, I need to find some things that are hashtag true. Search hashtag true. <laughs> Ooh, kittens are not arachnids? Great to know. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I can't make a better joke than that. I suppose that's the lot of a, that's the lot of a great detective in some ways. <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> hashtag facts in it. Hashtag facts in it. Facts in it. So I uh, I uh, Michael, what's that uh, thing? It's not a printer, but it's like a scanner phone. Oh wait, you mean facts in it? Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> What's the, what's the horse that Gandalf always rides? Oh, shadow facts, isn't it? What's that show that got the uh, Jonathan Frakes in it saying things like, you ever you ever seen a bicycle? We got gotcha. you. Writers made it up. Uh, facts fiction, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you have the time, Iris? Yes, I finished this month's manuscript at last, with barely a day to spare before the deadline. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. A brand new story to read in the adventures of Herlock Jones. You know, I always hide Hurley's violin in the days before I have a deadline. It's horribly loud and I just want to beat him over the head with it. You, you do, poor Mr. Sholmes. I'm sure that's very wise, Iris. How sensible of you. Now, my dear fellows, let's make a plan of action before we continue our investigation. So are you coming you with know, us? You have to wear the silly hat, and Susie, you get to wear the tall shoes. <laughs> so, how did it go in court this morning? I'm sure there was no shenanigans. Well, we still don't know the truth about what... You know, it's funny, there was actually less shenanigans than probably any of our other cases since we've come to England. And yet no, people really? acted like there were a lot of shenanigans. No. <laughs> we still don't know the truth about what really happened. But one thing's increasingly clear. Lord Van Zeeks definitely didn't do it. Oh, rats. Oh, goody. You know, this... Those in my rafters. Bats in it. <laughs> There, yes, this, that's right. This isn't make or break, but it would be really relieving and a nice change of pace just once in an Ace Attorney case to like a third of the way through the case have it become comically evident that your defendant couldn't have done it, and they go acquitted, and then the it like the rest is an investigation section outside of it for some reason. Like it's not just a needlessly long trial where it's like, hmm, someone should go to jail though, right? You need to figure out who actually did it. Just once, just one time yeah. I'd appreciate that. We managed to uncover several new facts as well. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, the tea's ready. And there was another development too. Kazuma. Yes, it's quite clear now. He's a joke! <laughs> the way he's acting, it's almost as if he's possessed by the Reaper! Possessed by the spirit of his sword. I know. Sword. Sword. I sword. mean, at the end of the proceedings earlier, he was like a bloodhound the way he was <laughs> shut the fuck up it was like a bloodhound chasing down after mr vigil's forgotten past <laughs> so that was written down on paper this is so stupid <laughs> he's normally he not he's not normally so mercilessly persistent Dots. what's going on in his head i wonder i really need to sit down with kazuma you really do and try to yeah. understand what he's going through it's it's unacceptable he hasn't, like, come over to your house to sit down and talk yet. If Gregson really was murdered the day before his body was discovered, then Lord Van Zeeks has to be innocent, you see. Uh, sorry, I was coughing. What? <laughs> well, that should be easy enough to work out just by examining the corpse, surely? Yes, you would expect so, but curiously, no time of death was included in the autopsy report. Hmm, that is curious. 
There are still unanswered questions about Lord Van Zeeks, <clears throat> though, aren't there? Uh, do you mean... I mean what he was doing there on Fresno Street that day in the first place. Well, according to the bird's testimony, he said he was investigating Inspector Grayson, didn't he? And it turns... Maybe he found out he was giving out his little ID! And it turns out that little room was actually the inspector's secret office. Oh, that sounds like I have a squeaky chair. Give me a moment. That sounds like it holds all the makings of a wonderfully devilish plot. But then, why was that notice board in there all covered in those particular papers? Papers about cases with a link to the Reaper. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. Oh dear, that sounds more like something horribly devilish. We must start by looking into Inspector Gregman's movie. Where he gone? What the man doing? Inspector Gregman. <laughs> I never imagined I might have to be investigating an inspector's movements. Really? <laughs> never? Well, according to the entry in his diary... Ow! So, he was carrying out an incognito investigation <laughs> of the Red-Headed League the day before his death. Someone in chat, what the Greg doing? <laughs> yeah! Oh, you, you mean he was doing the same as Hurley? Well... Mr. Sholmes was trying to apply, whereas the, invect the Invector was supposed oh. to be investigating. I do wish it had been the other way around. I wish Herlog Sholmes was dead! I mean, I feel like that would solve more problems than it would cause. Yes! Yo, we got DVD player in chat! What? Hell yeah! The original DVD player. Hey, 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 can you both go in the corner for me real quick? <laughs> ah, you missed. I know exactly what you're talking about. All right. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but I'll, I'll believe you. I get it. Anyways, <laughs> as it turns out, the inspector who went to investigate the Red-Headed League that day wasn't actually Gregson at all. It was Mr. Vigil in possession of, of Gregson's identification. Hmm, you know what that sounds like to me? Bullshit! Establishing an alibi! Oh my! Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right, Iris! But why would Gregson need an alibi? It would appear that the inspector... ...had something to do that he wished to keep secret. Oh, uh, what would I do without you, Emma? <laughs> I didn't... I forgot who I was for a moment. I, I didn't believe it. <laughs> I, I always thought he was just a harmless lover of fish and chips. <laughs> oh, I was a lover of fish and chips, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps they were seasoned with something a little more potent than salt and vinegar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I said, I'm a lover of fish and chips. I'll tell you what in there is facts in it. Okay! <laughs> Yo, that was almost a nice, a lovely Amen break there, Gregson. <laughs> well, anyway, if Lord Van Zeeks felt the need to investigate Gregson... Yes, I agree. We must try to find out what he knows. Sometimes you three just go off, and I just have no idea what to do. <laughs> you say? <laughs> ah, give me a second. I can't do the Irish voice while I'm laughing or smiling. Isn't that the name yeah. of the lady who came to visit Hurley yesterday? <laughs> Mr. Dye. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> Ask Mr. Sholmes if he would help her to find her missing husband. Only Mr. Sholmes completely passed the buck to us. <laughs> Hashtag fish. Hashtag jokes. Actually, <laughs> true. <laughs> Actually, didn't you say that Mr. Vigil has been taken to hospital? Do you know which one? Well, there's oh, only one knows. we've already made. Ah, it's St. Sinners, a fucking course. I'm starting to wonder if all the other hospitals in London have closed down. That's amazing, we know. You found the lady's husband already. Well, I suppose I have. By accident. And ten years ago, while Mr. Fitchell was the chief... He was at the... He responsible jail... <laughs> <laughs> no! So when the convict escaped, he was held responsible and immediately dismissed. Sometimes I really don't want to grow up. There's more! 
idiot for ten years after that. While he was ostensibly working as a peddler, he also had another secret job. He was paid by Gregson to be a stand-in, to impersonate the inspector. To impersonate Gregson? But, but, but why? I, uh, could never afford a mirror. <laughs> I have absolutely Very no idea. Very funny, honestly. Judy <laughs> oh, was right. I'm starting to think all adults are up to no good now. Including you, you know. I haven't paid anyone to impersonate me. What's that funny man in the corner? Hello. <laughs> that means he has ties to the professor. <laughs> and to Inspector Gregson, though. <laughs> so I do think we ought to pay a visit to Mr. Fitchell, don't you? Thank you, Saint Citizen. So I'm gonna. <laughs> hey, it's me. <laughs> he's like he he looks like Reno Ski, but he's like all hunched over. Every limb is like one inch longer than the last. It's... In chat, it's one Hodo. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was gonna say it's left Hodo. He's always off to the left. <laughs> it's Waru Hodo. Hello. I can't blink, but I can reach me always with like my tongue. <laughs> Well, I think it's clear what we have to do, isn't it? I can't stop fucking laughing. We have all these to days. kill left Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> then there will be only one left. Wait, and, <laughs> and he'll be the right one. Let us investigate, my dear fellows. Oh, Iris, you're even more enthusiastic than usual today. If anyone has anything to hide, my special Wilson shooting iron will soon set them straight. That water pistol. Oh, this is, uh, this, this is filled with mercury. Oh. oh. And I'm quite sure it will be very effective. I'd better be careful not to hide anything. What? I don't like this new voice you've been doing in your head. I can hear it and so I do not Sorry, like it. I like the canon that all the blue voices are just Walu <laughs> Waru Hojo yeah. mumbling to himself <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> Well, it feels a little strange that Mr. Sholmes is nowhere to be seen, but still, uh, let's go and see what we can find out. Yes! Right, let's go, team. <laughs> On three. What, what are we saying? One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three. Yeah! Three. Yeah. three. He um, just vanishes. No worry. I'll procure a horse for us, at least most of it. I'll ah! Unhinge his jaw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess we're going to this one first. I've constructed a horse using three armadillos as the wheels. All it's right, gonna let's, be real fast. Let's go to the prison instead, then I think. All right. <laughs> what the hell is that behind you? <laughs> you better not have brought left bat. <laughs> you can finally see him. Finally, Lord Van Zeex is reading. <laughs> Lord Van Vliet <laughs> is reading a book. Let's have us a little look. Can you read this in the most condescending voice you have as Suzano? Oh, I do believe I can. This, oh, you wanted me to do this, this, <laughs> this line? <yeah. laughs> I thought you meant moving forward. No, just this line. Lord Van Zeex is reading. Look. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't seem like he wants visitors, does he? But he must have noticed that we're here, surely. Yeah, we aware. should talk to him. <laughs> uh, left Norahodo. My love. <laughs> no. My brother, left What do you need beneath what? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's no way to greet the lawyer who's trying his hardest to prove your innocence, is it? Mm, perhaps not. <laughs> Sorry, that was my goose. I stepped on him. <laughs> I apologize. This lets you have pets in here? He's not my pet. That's he my is brother. my curse. <laughs> <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> yes, the professor, he swapped their brains. The goose's head is way too big. <laughs> I apologize. So, what can He's I do? He's <laughs> what? In chat, someone says he's healing. <laughs> Lord Van Zeex speaking earnestly. What is this bit? Leave me alone. Next bit, please. You fall 
Dog will lift over London for the first time in months tomorrow. <laughs> this does feel very, very strange. I like to think that left Naruhardo is just like hanging off of Naruhardo's <laughs> shoulders like a backpack. How large is he? <laughs> he is a man. All right. I imagine he's man size, but he's like semi incorporeal, so only certain parts of his body are existent at a time. Siv, it's making me think of something from Elden Ring. <laughs> 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 I must say, I was impressed. Oh, well, thank you. Not by you, by your friends, your <laughs> prosecutor friend. Oh, I see, yes. I'm thinking of more examples you could have been talking about, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's sardonic, don't you think? For a man such as me, so loathing of... Mm, strangers to be entirely at the mercy of the two of you i suppose it's retribution for having played the part of the reaper all these years or racism what i think it's racism sir played the part oh sorry played the part i think it's the racism I think it's, it's the racism. Hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear. It's the <laughs> racism. <laughs> you once told me that you gladly allowed people to believe you were the Reaper because it helped reduce the amount of serious crime that took place in London. If keeping quiet and playing the part benefits the cause, a cause I myself am committed to pursuing, then why would I choose to say anything? But the henchman of a criminal killed by the Reaper attacked you only the other day. And that was just the most recent of many attempts on your life, wasn't it? Someone is clearly profiting from your silence about all of this. Someone is using you. Believe me, ever since the Reaper first appeared, I've been doing my utmost to expose him. Or rather, expose the organization. Uh, you mean... The organization. It's inconceivable that all these accidents were orchestrated by one man. No, the Reaper always appears to have very accurate information about the accused in each case, which can only mean that somebody at Scotland Yard is involved. Someone at... you... you can't mean... Yes, someone at Scotland Yard. Ooh. It's taken me many years, but I've finally identified the central figure in this Reaper organization. Yo, real quick. It's a fan club. Uh, mini, mini three mayhem in chat. It was Walpole. Uh, huge respect for that reference. Tobias Gregson. No, no! Gregson, the Reaper, not me old chum. <laughs> nibbling on R N Naruhodo's ear. So, the reason you are investigating Inspector Gregson is because you intended to expose him as the Reaper? As I said, the Reaper of the Bailey is no single man. It's a highly secret organization with close ties to Scotland Yard, but there's no doubt that Gregson was a key member of that organization. I, I, I don't believe it. Are you saying that Gracie, he, he was behind all those awful criminals meeting the- mm, Facts, hashtag in it. Gregson uh, didn't do the dirty work himself. Who? Uh, he was the tactician. His job was to covertly investigate the marks and plot their assassinations. In order to do that without arousing suspicion, he regular, regularly needed a firm alibi. Which is where Mr. Virgil came in, posing as the inspector. Yes. Vigil knows nothing of the Reaper. But the room he rents on Fresno Street was almost certainly the headquarters of the operation. Gregson would have met the assassin there for briefings. So we don't actually know who carried out the It was Sholmes! Actually, I do have a name. Y you what? Yes. Well, if you can name the man, these. you have the true identity of the Reaper already, then. <clears throat> or, if I can name the woman. <gasps> oh? Yes. She's a young woman. Yeah! Oh. By oh. the name of Asa Shin. Both Siv and I. 
Oh, it's the reverse of the guys staring at the screen and pointing. Yeah, the fucking IGN guys meme. Mm. Wait, what? Shin, who's that? <laughs> oh, great. I get to be horrendous again. Miss Asa Shin, the true name of a terrifying fi- Oh. Assassin. Yeah, you got it, buddy. I figured it out. I'm yeah. listen. I'm still just fucked up by the fact that they introduce her as Miss A Shin. Like, it, it, I only knew too well. I sorry, guys. I was the reason I didn't get it is because I was too happy at the concept that it might have been the little albino reaper girl and then they brought this yeah. character back who I don't care about at all she came to Japan posing as a visiting student and was murdered by Dr. John H. Wilson then just when it seemed that diplomatic protection would help her escape Japan and conviction the mysterious woman was herself murdered in a small yeah that bitch got house. ganked right on the beach and that woman was actually the reaper of the bailey Pretty dumb, right? Mr. Narahodo, this perhaps isn't the place to discuss. No, no, of course not. We can't mention it here. The fact that she killed Dr. John H. Wilson. She what killed a man named Dr. Dr. Don H. Wilson. Huh? Ha! <laughs> Nani! Nani? <laughs> because Iris doesn't know, and it's very likely that the man was her father. Huh? Asashin. I should let father know at once. Yes, I agree. Mm. Isn't there someone you forgot to ask? <laughs> God. Kazuma, isn't it? Kazuma Asagi. You say he's a friend of yours. My best friend. Really? Oof. Really? Oof, Yikes. Man. Really? You certainly know how to pick him. <laughs> he's the reason. Mm. <laughs> Look at that jugular. <laughs> He's that whole ri he's whole Britain merits. I have nothing but respect for him. Yes, I understand that only the very best students are selected for such opportunities. Chat, actually, Van Zeeks, it's pronounced ass. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a fine demonstration of how sharp he is in the proceedings earlier today. He missed nothing. Okay. He was a bit of a dick. A bit of an idiot, honestly. I don't know if I'd say he missed nothing. No. In fact, his flawless performance very much reminded me of his father. Genshin Asagi, the professor. You remember, player. <laughs> it's true that the aristocracy at the time was the root of numerous grave societal problems. They were abusing their power, playing with the common man as pawns in politics, in economics, in war. In many ways, Osagi was carving out a canker from society that we British couldn't deal with ourselves. Uh, I... I see. But that's precisely why it makes no sense. Clint Van Zeeks, my brother, was a noble and upstanding man. He wasn't corrupt. He was my brother. Why did Why you do did I do that? I'm going to take that? my wife and brother's life. Clint. He, Clint. He, he got. He got God. In spite of having once saved mine. He saved your life. How did that happen? How did that happen? Not. Sorry. It was ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. What was to be the professor's final strike had sent a wave of panic through the capital. So Clint Van Zeeks, your brother, had already been killed at this point then. Genji and I were walking down some back streets at a late hour. Of course, at that point, I had no idea of the true nature of the man at my side. All of a sudden... Don't make a peep! You're coming with us! Left Naruhodu appeared. We were surrounded. All of our assailants were armed with pistols, their faces obscured by scarves. Clint was not only from noble heritage, 
He was a brilliant prosecutor as well. The scum of London hated the sight of him, and they had no sympathy for his younger brother. Hang on! Look at the ring that he's wearing. That's the same ring that Vigil's wearing. Where? This? The, the ring? Yes. Sun Genshin, yeah. Okay, I, once again, <clears throat> literally can't see it. Would never have mm. noticed that if you hadn't mm. mentioned it. Mm. I've been targeted several times before already. One day I'll get a monitor that works. Yeah, it's Van Zeke's all right, we got him. I could hear them murmuring amongst themselves. Man, 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 I knew man. they were after me. Man, man. But just when I thought my time had come. If I, oh, that's you. That I say that's uh, you, but like, no, that's a. Uh, it's Genshin. It's Genshin. Ooh. Yeah, you want to be Genshin? I don't imagine he'll have that many lines. If I let them kill you, Clint would never forgive me. It was Asagi's voice, just a whisper in my ear. Bang! Then he, then he fired a gun in my ear. I am deaf on the left side now. <laughs> right af after that, I don't remember exactly what happened, because that's a fucking trend now, I guess. The next thing I knew, there was silence all around. Genshin lay on the cobbled street. Blood was seeping from his left hand. He shielded me. How? Two days later, they arrested him. On suspicion of being London's most notorious mass murderer ever, the professor. Do you think Jack the Ripper is a little upset by that claim? Oh, old Jackie's pissed. More like Jack the Ripped Off. Yes. All at once, I lost the brother I revered and the foreign friend I held in such high regard. I'm so sorry, Lord Benzix. This excuses your racism. Thank yes. you for understanding. In its entirety, now become a better character. That's the end of my miserable tale. I never thought I'd recount it to anyone. Why? Well, mm. thank you for confiding in me. The Professor, the Reaper, and Inspector Gregson. My OT3. I wonder just how... I wonder just how intimately related they all were. I still can't quite believe that Gregson was essentially the Reaper, giving assassination orders to Giselle Brett. Mr. Narahodo, let's go and inform my father. I... I can't believe that Giselle Brett was a professional assassin, given the way she chose to murder Wilson. <laughs> so, I mean, she actually would have gotten away with it. Um, but, you know, steak happened. But I guess that was the mistake. Yeah, she did that, though. <laughs> Alright. I'm sure our government will want to hear about this new information. Oh, that means I get to meet your daddy, Susie! Hooray! Yes, alright. Let's, let's head back to the Great Waterloo Hotel then. Get on me backs, mate. <laughs> Warner Bros. Classic. <laughs> Go away. Wait. Can you bring me back a snack? But before you go, take this goose. No. <laughs> okay. I thought it yesterday, and I think it again today. This place is so... Princely. It's a wild guess, but I have a feeling you think the same tomorrow, too. <laughs> My tea has a finer fragrance than whatever they're serving in the tea room here, though, wouldn't you say? Ah, look what we have here. This is an unexpected pleasure. Papother! Father! <laughs> have you never heard us say Papother? It's one of my favorites. No. Suzato, I'm glad you're here. They stapled my butt to the couch. I live here now. Oh, no wonder you haven't left, silly goose. Oh, is this your daddy, Susie? How lovely. Did someone say silly goose? <laughs> what a charming young lady. And you are? A little mouse. <laughs> ah! Ah, really? <laughs> so you're the author of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, are you? It's me, Iris Wilson, at your service, sir. Susie's been such a wonderful friend to me over the last year, you know. Well, Miss Wilson, 
I must say I read your work regularly and with much interest. Iris actually lives with Mr. Sholmes, you know, Father. Really? Is that so? Well, perhaps that goes some way to explain that bright look in your eyes. Opium! Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't be smiling so early if you knew just how bright. There is a very is powerful me. person in chat right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they said <laughs> This person owns it. Respect to you. They said that guy's mustache is sexy AF. Not as sexy as Robotniks, though. <laughs> <laughs> now then, young Marahodo, it was a pleasure seeing you in action earlier. As an, invi in as an invitee of the symposium, I was allowed to observe from the gallery, after I twisted some arms. Literally, I'm a wanted man. And I must say, it was truly an exemplary performance. Oh, well, thank you very much. Although I'm fairly certain you admitted by Kazuma at the end there, Ryanosuke, listen to me, your evil self. You gotta get more self-confidence, my man. I'm gonna keep nibbling on your ear until you do. No, no, no. <laughs> Please don't misunderstand. It was you who impressed me. Really? You didn't miss a step against Asuki. Oh, I'm awake. <laughs> and we all know how capable he is. For some reason, my brain, when you yelled really, I envisioned Naruhodo like left this conversation to look up the fireplace chimney and then just <laughs> yelled, really? <laughs> really? To have matured into such a fine defense lawyer in less than a year is quite extraordinary. It's very kind of you to say so. And really? Nice to hear. <laughs> what I saw in court today confirmed what I've been hoping for. The favor I mentioned yesterday, Narahodo. I trust you haven't forgotten. Oh, no, you... You did mention something, didn't you? But first, we have something to report, Father. Of course, of course. Uh, shall we take tea while we discuss matters further? Mm. Did someone say tea? I wonder where Judge Shigoku has got to. Oh, he's dead. Got I him. killed him. <clears throat> How do you always manage to make the protagonists not human in some way in every game? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Father, do you know about the so-called Reaper of the Bailey? I've heard rumors. Some members of the judiciary explained it all to me yesterday. Of course, when I was a visiting student here in London, the Reaper was yet to emerge. Right, it didn't appear until after the case when the visiting students had already returned home. Lord Van Zeeks, who was in the dock today. That was Beric, the younger brother of Clint Van Zeeks, I believe. That's right. And he's known throughout London as the Reaper, as you've heard. But the truth is, it wasn't him behind all of those mysterious deaths. It was somebody else. I see. Do you think that the Reaper <clears throat> stuff actually started with the Professor murders? And that Genshin is innocent of everything? That'd Probably. Be neat. So what you're saying is, there's been a professional killer at work here. And in which case it couldn't have been Giselle Brett. Exactly. Someone by the name of Asa Sheen, in fact. I beg your pardon. Did, did you say Asa Sheen? You mean that Giselle Brett woman who was responsible for killing my great friend? Oh no! A friend of yours was killed! Uh, um, Professor done. Mikitoba, I think perhaps we shouldn't discuss this right now. Because the, because the friend the professor is talking about is Dr. John H. Wilson. That's Iris's puppy niece. That's oh, her I brother. I feel that I I do! And that's not something we want I Iris do. to find out about. Not like this anyway. I'm just picturing Waru Hodo is like Ryuk <laughs> just floating up Yes! There. Yes. <laughs> So, his death. <laughs> uh, I've just remembered something. Biscuits! This hotel has the most delicious looking biscuits. That was rather out of the blue. Yes! She's doing this deliberately. Do you understand, Renosuke? It's a ruse. <laughs> I think Explain. I'll go and see if I can purchase some. I wonder, would you like to come too, Iris? 
No, thank you. No, I want to hear about murder. Oh, yes, you just tried to leave me behind. You mean like your dead <laughs> father? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I'm sorry. Ryanosuke knew the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's the bus? There it is. Whoop! <laughs> Throw him under. <laughs> no! <laughs> so that young faction girl it. is called Iris Wilson, <laughs> is she? Yes, that's right. That's I, you. I, I was reading something in chat. And she's the author of all those adventure stories starring the great Detective Sholmes. But <clears throat> the name of the credited author isn't Iris, is it? It's Dr. Jo John H. Wilson. Yes, I know. That's the name of her father, you see. Her father? Dr. I've heard that word. Father. Dr. John <laughs> oh. H. Wilson. I was deeply indebted to the man for all the kindness he showed me during my time in London. That's why I was keen to reciprocate and invite him to Imperial Yume University four years ago. But he was murdered last year by Giselle Brett. Why? Why would the hand of the Reaper stretch all the way to Japan? It's, it's pretty long. It's one of those sticky slavery hands, it is. <laughs> Iris knows nothing about that case, but it seems very likely that the victim, Dr. Wilson, was her father. I see. He conceived her, becoming her parental unit. Hmm. They're related. Mm. That's her dad. <laughs> you know, I think that might be her dad. <laughs> well, I can't say that we ever spoke about his family, so I don't know if he had a daughter or not. That's weird, right? Well, but I think he's I... the dad, that could mean he's the father? At some point, he inseminated a woman, and the egg and sperm combined... Oh my combined god! Guys, my... I'm not even paying attention. Next and, bit. And that got I, you know what? Okay. I'm vetoing that. That's not gross enough to warrant a next bit. <laughs> this is how human birth works. <laughs> <sighs> All right, can Never we move fine. on? Fine. So it could have been another Dr. Wilson, you think? Well, John and Wilson are both common names, after all. Still, it's probably best not to mention this to the young lady until we can be sure. That's what we thought, yes. We're back! With cinnamon biscuits. Amy, you should put on the cinnamon rolls, please. Oh. I'm not doing that right now. They smell Amy, delicious, you Iris. I think cinnamon will go very well with the tea they serve here. Don't you, Susie? What flavour is that tea, Runo? Dead father! <laughs> oh, how peculiar. Yes, I'm sure you're right, Iris. I haven't seen Judge Jigoku for a while, have you? Oh. Guilty! <laughs> I've sent dozens to their death! Judge Jigoku is the man we met earlier! <laughs> no, now that you mention it, I haven't seen him since this morning either. I uh -oh. suppose since the symposium's opening was post-symposium pwned, he'll have gone to explore the <laughs> James Bond's having a stroke! <laughs> that reminds me of something you mentioned yesterday. About Judge Shigoku having once been in the dark himself. Ah, uh, yes. It was all tied up with that accursed trial. The closed trial of Cosmos father. I just... <laughs> with this new voice for Ryonosuke's blue text, I can't help but, like, picture this as, like, Ryanosuke is, like, a four-year-old and, like, their dad is playing the video game for them, being like, In case you forgot, Ryanosuke, yeah. every three minutes. <laughs> Seishiro was trying to mitigate Genshin's guilt, so he took the sand to testify. But he got a little carried away and, uh, actually managed to break the witness stand. Oops. Oh, really? <laughs> wow! He also said some contemptuous words about the British Empire, for which he was charged. Oh dear. You guys are racist! What? Stop <laughs> being right! <laughs> Although it's worryingly easy to imagine him to, to imagine Bart Strong. Well, it was alright in the end. He was acquitted and returned home to- we returned home together. Together? Ah yes, talking of Seishiro. I have a copy of the photograph we all took together yesterday oh. here. Please. Take it. 
Wes, please. Yeah. Oh, what a lovely picture. These are the tongs I use to touch my daughter's shoulder. I'm too that afraid. That is a fan, Papa. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you use that to move air back and forth so you do not get sweaty and overwhelmed. You can use tongs to move air back and forth. It's just much less efficient. It certainly <laughs> seems to shout, we've arrived in Britain. <laughs> this will be important. None of us had any idea what was coming when we took that, did we? No. No, that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I read it like that? That's so Hashtag truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mentioned a favor you'd like to ask me. Well, this fateful trial that you're fighting. One way or another, it'll be over before long. And when it is... I'd like you to accompany me back to Japan. You want me to do... What? The papa what? No! Oh, all right. Now, Suzaru, you should understand. You've seen how our courts work firsthand. Japan's judicial system is in its infancy, especially when it comes to defense. Oh, you mean... The Supreme Court of Judicature is in desperate need of a good defense lawyer. As soon as possible. Really quite urgently, in fact. But, but I've not even been in London a year yet. I've read all of Suzato's reports. I'm well aware of your extraordinary talents. And having seen you in action with my own eyes earlier today, there's no question. You, Naruhudo, are precisely the man our country needs. B! So, you'd be leaving then, Runo? But then, what am I supposed to do, Father? I don't know. Oh, guess I'll go to Broadway. <laughs> Broadway? <laughs> you came here to serve as Asagi's judicial assistant. Oh, yes, she's supposed to be Cosmo's assistant. <coughs> Our government is still in the process of deciding how to best deal with his situation, though. You've always chosen your own path, Suzato, since I, like, abandoned you for six years. As I... Really fucked up of you to do that. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I trust his smiles. <laughs> and I do it again. And I will, right now. Goodbye. War pipes out. And I <laughs> trust your judgment in this matter also. Papa. Please, the pair of you, don't look so downcast. It's merely a suggestion, you understand. And a hope, if I'm honest, but I won't force you. All I ask is that you consider it, and come to a decision by the time this trial concludes. Yes, all right. You, you won't leave, will you, Runa? You won't leave me with shows! Don't leave me. He, he feeds me nothing but crackers. I'm... I must stay. Which is to say, why I have to share them with the rat that lives on the top floor. That's what... <sighs> I live on the top floor. <laughs> <laughs> the, th it's... <laughs> the thought hadn't even crossed my mind. Up until now, I'd just been trying to do what I believe to be Cosima's will. But it turns out Cosima's a bit of an idiot. So, <laughs> where does that leave me? You well, if you'll excuse me now. He who see ya. I need to telegram the government ministers and the Japanese police with this information <clears throat> about Asashin. Of course, Papa. Thank you. I look forward to next month's installment, Miss Wilson. Oh, good. And please do come to Baker Street sometime, won't you? I'll kill you. We'd love to entertain you. I would be delighted. The best of luck tomorrow, Narahodo. And, uh... Tomorrow, Hodo. Tomorrow, Hodo. Papa, give my suggestion your full consideration, Narahodo, won't you? Yes, I will. Going back home. Um... That was going back home? Sorry. Uh, that also was a reminder, because in case... Like, I think we were doing a bit over it. Um... They did straight up say that John Wilson was not Sholmes' partner. Just want to make sure that we are all on the same page for that. Mm. Oh, okay. 
You know, Kazuma-sama has always meant a great deal to my papa. I'm sure he'd love the chance to meet with him and talk to him about all of this. Wow, I can't believe my fucking dad gets to talk to Kazuma before we do. Yes, no doubt. <sighs> Dots. Assassin. Of course, it's so ob Oh, there you are. Hi. Uh, of course, it's so obvious. Look what I have neglected can consider the possibility before now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my I'm mouth going has, crazy. My mouth hasn't warmed up to acting yet since the game has decided to give me zero lines of dialogue. <laughs> it's beast or famine for good old yam. <laughs> ah, hello, my dear fellows. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes. Harley, where have you been? I joined you all for tea, of course. What an extraordinary question. I I didn't notice you at all. I was no disguised matter, as no your matter. father. <laughs> Anyway, to more pressing concerns, Mr. Narahodo! Oh, yes? I must dispatch a telegram to your country at once. It is a matter of much urgency. To Japan, you mean? Yeah. What else would he mean? Tell me, to whom can I entrust the task? Quickly now, who? Uh, uh well, um... My papa has just now left to send a telegram to the Imperial Police Bureau, Bureau of Japan himself. I see. Well, he looked reliable enough for a bearded fellow. What does that mean? He He's mustached. <laughs> I don't think what Father Sports could be considered a beard, Mr. Sholmes. Beard? A beard? It's not a moment to lose. Kindly ask your trusty unshaven father to see this event. <laughs> I, I, I will, um, but well, what is it? A beard? Well, it's a piece of hair on a face. No questions at this time, if you please, Mr. Zatu. All we can do is pray. That for once, my deduction is awry. Doesn't that imply- okay. Now then! <laughs> you may be surprised to learn that I am a very busy man. Yes. I, s I certainly have no time to hide behind settees and eavesdrop on other people's conversations. So what, Saja? <sighs> Leave the sending of this in your hands, then, my dear fellows. Gone! Smoke uh, bomb! Wait a minute, Mr. Sholmes, Yam needs someone to voice! That's okay. He just sort of ran off, didn't he? At quite a pace. And left the unpaid bill for his tea behind, too. What <laughs> douche. I'm gonna... I must catch up with Papa there at the telegraph office at once. Did we actually get that thing, or...? Nope, it's Ace Attorney. Yeah. And I'll run and call us a cab straight away! Everyone's <coughs> disappearing. Hey, and now is me thinking I'll, uh, everyone would be clamoring to pay Mr. Sholmes's bill. It's all right, Narahodo. You'll always have me, thanks to the curse. Were you nibbling on my ear? Why would you do that? Nobody. This is the ward where Mr. Vigil was brought, apparently. To be frank, I'm a little worried about seeing him again. Mm. Should should oh. Yam voice Vigil now? Just Yam, so... would you like to be mad? No, it's okay. You were doing a good job. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. okay. Ah, the lawyer. Hello again. Uh, are you feeling better now, Mr. Vigil? No. I uh, horrendous, really. Yes, thank you. Somewhat better. I'm so sorry to have caused you to... I mean, it was because of me. If I hadn't exposed your secret and forced you to remember things, you'd obviously tried to forget. Mm, tell me, Hertie. The prosecutor was here until a few moments ago, too. You just missed him. Oh. Kazuma beat us to it. He said m much the same as you. He was very apologetic, but the truth is, I brought this all upon myself. Please, don't think like that. Wonder how many times we're going to talk to attempted suicide victims in this room? I think there's a gas leak in this room. <laughs> Keeping it from Evie, my wife, all these years, I've carried such a sense of guilt. But that's not the worst of it. Over time, I began moving strangely. I obviously came to deceive myself as well. You mean about your dismissal? Looking back now, 
I'm beginning to think that perhaps Inspector Gregson didn't stumble across me by accident at all. I mean, he compensated me so generously for acting as his stand-in. That was a different room. No, it waned. <laughs> no, same one. He was clearly concerned for my well-being and doing what he could to help. So perhaps Gregson knew exactly what had become of Mr. Vigil all along then. I'm sure this is just desserts for ten years of lies and deception, but... It wasn't me that helped the professor escape ten years ago! It wasn't me! I swear it! I swear it's true! Oh, Mr. Fitchell. I'm sure you'd rather not dredge up even more from your past at this time, but... If possible, could you... Ooh, could you tell us exactly what happened? I don't like that don't. expression. I oh, want what? to write something. Yeah, I don't know why that did that. I need to get this all off my chest. I just want someone to tell me what I should have done. <sighs> Inspector Gregson was obviously engaged in a special operation of some sort. He was investigating something that even Scotland Yard couldn't know about. The details of the Reaper's marks, yes. It was when he had to carry out these investigations that I would take his identification and impersonate him. You would pretend to be the inspector and carry out investigations on his behalf? Whoa. Oh, no, ne never! A common street peddler couldn't possibly carry out a po proper police investigation. Eh. All I would do is go to the specified location and make a little hoo-ha. Just something to leave an impression, so everyone there would think, ah, a de detective called Gregson was here. So, that's what you were doing on the day prior to the incident? Yes, he asked me to take, uh, to, to make an appearance at the park on Lime Street for the Red-Headed League event. So, as usual, I flashed the inspector's identification around and was very vocal about my presence. But then you were taken prisoner by those red-headed fraudsters! Yes. So, you would always make a point of showing Gregson's identification and generally being loud? <sighs> that's what the inspector asked me to do, yes. Well, that's one way of becoming a legendary detective, I suppose. Not a good one, though. And, as you know, I suffered this bruising around my neck at their hands. But the following day, they kept their word and released me. Without returning the inspector's identification to you, however. We had arranged to meet in the Fresno Street room at five that day so I could report back to the inspector. But at the agreed time, that's when I heard the gunshot. It was at midnight on the 17th of June, ten years ago. That was the time scheduled for the execution. But the professor's execution never actually took place, did it? Or rather, the execution itself must have been used to affect the plan of escape. I hardly dare to imagine what a chilling plan that was. Barclay was renowned for being the highest security prison in the country. Everything that went in or out of the place was searched multiple times. But there was one notable exception, or rather one notable loophole, something that was never questioned. I have a feeling I know what that loophole was now. The coffins into which the bodies of the executed convicts were placed, correct? Yes. Once the coroner had confirmed the death of a convicted, condemned convict, the body was taken in its coffin for immediate burial in Lowgate Cemetery just behind the prison. The chief warder first had to sign the necessary papers. And after that, no matter of, no member of staff was permitted to touch the coffin containing the body again. Hmm. When executions took place, only the executioner and the coroner were permitted inside the chamber. I would wait in the adjacent room for word that the condemned convict was dead. On that occasion, once I had that confirmation, I went into the mortuary to find a lone coffin as usual. The procedure was that I would sign the paperwork having checked the coffin and then nail it shut. But for some reason that day the coffin was already nailed shut. No. I didn't think anything of it at the time. I assume that my deputy must have checked the coffin and nailed it shut before I arrived. So, you mean the coffin contained... 
Yes, I can only imagine that Asugi, having ex escaped his execution somehow, was still alive inside the coffin. The coffin was then taken through the main gates and deposited in Lowgate Cemetery. Presumably there wouldn't have been enough air inside to breathe for long. So in the early hours following the burial, somebody dug up the coffin again to set Genshin free. For Genshin 3.0. Mm -hmm. oh. But in the end, he was fatally shot in the graveyard anyway. What on earth really happened in Lowgate Cemetery that night, I wonder? I'm afraid I really don't know. All I can say with certainty are two things. I don't know, and I'll never Ask know. And I'll never know. <laughs> Asugi couldn't possibly have escaped that way without help from somebody working in the prison. And that somebody was not me. Was he cute? Obviously you knew the man then. The professor, I mean. Genshin Asugi. Yes, I remember him well, in fact. Do you, really? <laughs> Would you yes. mind telling us what you know? Well... Having been condemned to death as he was, any contact I had with the man was short, obviously. After that trial, which was carried out behind closed doors, attended only by the elite members of the judiciary. Oh. It called for his execution to be carried out at the earliest possible opportunity. The outcome of the Clark. trial was set from the beginning, wasn't it? It was a time of uh, delicate diplomacy when Britain and Japan were in the process of signing an important treaty. That meant that it's potentially destabilized, that this potentially destabilizing case had to be dealt with swiftly and discreetly. The man had less than a week in total. As I was the chief warder, I oversaw his short stay in the cells until his final hour. I remember being struck deeply by his noble character and incredible resilience. What do you mean exactly? He was a killer of many men, but he was always quiet and polite. He was a gentleman and a man of intellect. In fact, I couldn't bring myself to believe what he'd done, so I asked him one day. The five members of the aristocracy whose lives were taken. Were you really responsible? I'm guilty of the unforgivable crime of ending another human's life, yes. The following day, the close trial took place, and the verdict was no surprise. Guilty. That night, when he was brought back into his cell, I saw something. Something unusual. Something there unusual? There are people outside my window. One moment, I must close it. What? Oh. The last will and testament. Of Genshin Asogi. I want my son to disappear for a year and then be abrasive afterwards. As I said, it was on the night following his trial after he'd been found guilty. I was doing the rounds in the cells when I looked into Asogi's. I noticed that he seemed to have a sheet of paper in his hand. Ah, his last will and testament then, presumably. I'm gonna stop doing that bit because I think it robs Ryanosuke of like 80% of his character. Hmm. <laughs> as soon as he noticed me, he, hurry sh he hurriedly shoved it behind his back. But why did you find that so unusual? Isn't it normal for a man to pen a will when he knows his death is nigh? Yes, that's true, but there were special conditions to Asugi's incarceration, you see. What sort of conditions? Well, even though he was held in a cell designed for condemned, condemned inmates, he was allowed to keep his personal effects with him, with one exception. Really? He was allowed his things? That is unusual, <coughs> certainly. Of course, he'd been convicted of killing five members of the aristocracy. But at the same time, he was a guest in our country from the Empire of Japan. The powers that be were determined that his final day shouldn't be needlessly uncomfortable. And what was the exception you mentioned to the personal effects he was allowed? His fucking sword, wasn't it? That's the point. He wasn't permitted to have writing materials. Which includes a sword. <laughs> Specifically, no pens or paper. You see, I came round to his cell, and he was talking to the other prisoners. 
putting a small special tattoo on each of their backs. <laughs> when put together, they form a map. Hmm. So, he was prevented from leaving any written record of what happened. What happened to him? Yes, that was the long and short of it. I've no idea where he obtained that paper. Any writing materials could have been confiscated from him upon his incarceration. As I said, he hid the paper behind his back and then he pleaded with me. What? Well, did you just hide behind your back? Please turn a blind eye. This is my lifeline. But you know it's against the rules. You're the only person who's seen. If you just agree to keep quiet... All right then. But what's on that paper? A last will and testament. This will is the only weapon I have left now. How can a will be a weapon? Oh, I'm a black belt. Yeah, I'm pretty good. You know, I... <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, I decided to pretend I'd seen nothing and let him keep his will. But then later, it just seemed to vanish without trace. What? What do you mean it vanished? I don't remember. It would seem that isn't the end of the story of this mysterious will. I was the only person who saw Asugi's will, but... But somehow it disappeared. It was after Asugi's execution. Which was actually an elaborate jailbreak. The warders gathered up Asugi's possessions that were in his cell. They were all to be sent back to his family, home in Japan. To poor Kasuma-sama. Oh shit, is it, was it in the sheath of the sword? Mabe, and you're saying that it wasn't anywhere to be found among his personal effects. The will, I mean. That's right. Though, I didn't search through them myself. But Governor Caden was livid. He was screaming. It can I have disappeared completely? That doesn't quite make sense, though, does it? In what way? Well, we'd understood that only Mr. Vigil was aware of the world's existence. In which case, how did the prison governor know to look for it? Oh, yes, you're right! I really don't know how he knew. But it certainly seemed as though he knew of the will's existence from the outset. But only he didn't refer to it as a will. What he said was... The Asugi Papers. The Asugi Papers? I really can't tell you anything of the subsequent events. Because, well, what happened? Your dismissal. Uh -huh. In the way you blocked it from your memory. I'd forgotten it all until today. I don't suppose it's relevant to the case, though. Well, anyway, thank you very much for sharing it with us, Mr. Vigil. We're very grateful. Logic chess. I'm afraid there's really little more I can tell you. My wife Evie will be here shortly, so I do don't... I do hope I don't appear rude, but... No, no, not at all. Thank you again. But what will become of you now? Well, impersonating a police officer is a criminal offence, of course. I imagine that once I'm fully recovered, I shall be arrested. I'm so sorry. Don't be, please. It was all my own doing. I always knew that this day would come. Well, I wish you well. Goodbye, Mr. Vigil. Oh, he's, he died. Ah! Before you go, this this just one more thing. Oh, uh, one more thing. Yes, yeah, what is it? The Asuki papers. They're on paper. I hate this expression so much. I'd be very grateful if you'd make no mention of the things I told you about them. Presumably for some good reason. I feel like you could respond to a third of the dialogue in this franchise with that. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that their very existence is a closely guarded secret. If it became known that I'd remembered, well, it could be rather troublesome, I think. I understand.
understand. Some sort of will that Genshin Asagi penned just before his death, which the man himself claimed was his last weapon. I wonder, perhaps it had something to do with his plan to escape. If there's anyone who might know more about a document that Kazuma's father left behind... It would be Mr. Vigil's governor? What? Okay. Then we know precisely where we must go. Back to Barclay Prison. I probably would have but said didn't... it's Kazuma, but... but yeah. Didn't, didn't he just straight up say not to he tell anyone yeah. about this information? Yeah, and also that that what's... guy didn't find the papers and he was mad that he didn't find them. No, it's alright. We're good, we're good at our job. Just... I don't want to talk to Kazuma. He's been mean and dumb lately. Mum. <laughs> Deem. Moon. Deem. Oak, back again, are you? I'm Aspen, actually. Uh, yes, hello. <laughs> I've heard all about your investigations. Ready to report just now. You found him, eh? Vigil. Yes, luckily. Well, anywho. Stalin is does now playing Earth Defense Force 4.1. The laddie does not work for uh, here no more, so your case is not to do with Barclay. I wouldn't they like you to get the wrong idea about that? Of course. I'm just going to slur for a while. Oh my god. <laughs> Which yeah. is quite fitting for this guy. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mr. Vigil it's stopped not... working here 10 years ago now, so. Yes, we've seen his dismissal notice, haven't we? He was given the chop! Hi. Kimmer? Come it's here. It's I, Kimmer. Come here. Never oh heard no, of it. you're right. You're right, Seb. My bad. Kimmer. It's like uh, a little a pet baby. Name. Oh. You can very well. Sure. How about we handcuff biscuit? Oh, they all really like little handcuffs. And it's hard as irons, too. Sure. What's what you doing here today? Well, there's something we'd like to ask you about, actually. Is that so? We believe there might have been a document that disappeared from Genshin Asagi. <laughs> Not even ten minutes. I think it's called the Asagi Papers or something. I don't Guys! know. Oh, my god. Did I know Shay? Gregson's death is not to do with things that might have happened at Barclay. Leave the past in the past, laddie. Let's not fold her for boot with irrelevant details. <laughs> oh boy, Will. You made it. You made it. Well, it is hard for me to read that. <laughs> this... <laughs> His expressions changed completely. No, it didn't. <laughs> We're clearly on to something here. Boot with details. So anyway... The murderers botched execution. The whole miserable escape. They were Barclay's darkest hour, aye. A shocking embarrassment. Because the convict had a collaborator on the prison staff, you mean? What do you know about that? Aye, for shame. The coroner who confirmed the death of the man after execution, Courtney Scythe. And my chief warder at the time, Vigil, who was in charge of the whole affair. Mitchell says he didn't know anything about it. The rascal wouldn't say otherwise, eh? More handcuffs. Oh, how could I say no? You have... You, you can never have too much iron in your diet. Actually, you can, Iris. You can. When Mr. Vigil was handed this dismissal notice as a result of what had happened, he was so despairing he jumped out of your office window, didn't he? No. I don't like to say, but that's just Vigil trying to get out of it. Do you not think he would, uh, would, oh my god, have would, jumped from the shock Nay of his is truck. just would not. Nay is not. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I figure, but still my brain is like, as I'm reading, I'm like, fuck. Yes. Uh, have jumped from the shock of his crimes being exposed there. Eh? I do. You wouldn't have liked to say otherwise, would you? Of course. I'm going to shun all responsibility myself. I should not have let them deceive me. 
actually, there's barely anybody that Ken's wouldn't. Oh, what went on at the time? Ken's is tricky because that's just a Scottish word that just means that's no. Just, yep. As in K N O W. No. Yeah. It's not, it's not Scottish, it's archaic English. We Gregson having been murdered and Dr. Scythe forbidden from having any visitors. I mean, Scottish people still use it. I think they own it now. Um, I mean, no. It just means they adopted it. And it didn't die over there. That's all. No visitors. Someone obviously didn't want her giving anything away. Well, we're not going home empty-handed. And I wouldn't a dream of sending you packing with not Kimmer. Here, take a handcuff or two. Well, it would be rude to say no. Would it want to become something I didn't catch it in time? Anemic. I suppose if there's anybody who might still kin about what happened back then, it'd be the last from the forensic division, Maria Gori. Whoa. Maria Gori? Aye, Sai's daughter. <laughs> Sorry, I was flailing so hard I advanced. No, the I saw the mouse cursor. <laughs> Uh, she did not have no more, just the one. But the wee bairns followed in her mam's footsteps, and you did not ever see her without a scalp in her hand. Ah. The sieve only session. <laughs> Mama, what is this? Uh, where did she spring from? Did she just, did she just call a doctor, Mama? Dr. Scythe's daughter, Maria Gori. We could do with talking to her. Yes, I think we could do with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, she's Dr. Scythe's daughter, but her surname is Gori? Aye, there's a family history, I'm sure. But an ain't in the ins and outs of it. She grew up watching her mum <sighs> working with the bodies of folk who died in strange circumstances. She decided to do the same with her own life. I can I understand it myself. Perhaps she was driven by a deep respect for her mother. Or maybe she's just like a psychopath or something. <laughs> Perhaps. Anywho, she was in charge of Gregson's autopsy, I believe. Oi! Right, and the coroner responsible for this incomplete report. Someone w told me once that the wee lassie always loved her mam's stories about cutting up bodies. There's even a rumor that she used to listen to the funeral march as a lullaby. Well, then perhaps her mother might have told her about the autopsy from the case ten years ago. Bit of a stretch, Suzano. Aye, I say there's a fighting chance at least. After all, that was a life-changing case for all of us. We really need to speak to Miss Gory herself about this, I think. Well, thank you very much. I'm no happy about any part of this. It took years for Londoners to finally forget the whole professional business. Can you not give up on this, laddie? Stop asking pointless questions. I'm sorry. I don't like dredging up these painful memories for everyone. Can you not just stay away now? Leave me alone and Danae come back here, eh? No, because there's one more thing. So the Osagi papers! <laughs> How do you come about that, laddie? Uh, <laughs> fell, fell off a turnip truck. There's no many folks even here in the prison who've heard of those papers. Oh, well, um, can't tell only Mr. Virgil, Virgil told me. I'm afraid our sources must remain confidential, sir. Hmm. <laughs> we've been led to believe that papers, the, the papers actually a last will and testament, is that right? The professor's, or rather, Genshin Osage's. Hmm. Aye, that's right. You're well informed, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. He's at the end of the silent treatment. But then, after the convict's execution, it mysteriously vanished from his cell, didn't it? Have us no. You're off at half cock there. I think you didn't quite get the facts straight. It was there in the cell, exactly where it should have been. Oh, not what we heard elsewhere. Let me just have a wee look around here. I'm sure I could find it. This was a shell, after all. <laughs> Aye, here you are. See? 
the last will and testament of Genshin Asage, written with a calligraphy brush. Of course, I can never read a word of those Japanese squiggles. But I mind it says, but I mind it says he leaves all his worldly possessions to his son back in his homeland. Yes, that's correct. Uh, that is the gist of it. So these are the Osage papers. No. Aye, of course they are. Papers written by Osage. They do about it. There's no mystery here, laddie. That's your lot. I bet Jigoku wrote those. Hmm. After all, the Stramish old... <sighs> Stramish? Stramish oh. old, that slicer of in execution. That one I got nothing on. No uh, idea wait. what that says. We sent the man's possessions back to his clan in Japan, and that was the end of it. I think he just, mean the case, he just means the case was fucked up and weird. Yeah. Yeah, that would I make sense. I think we ought to make a record of this, Mr. Narahodo, just in case. Bullshit. One thing before you go on your way, Mr. Narahodo. Oh, yes? Those papers are not to do with Gregson's death. I prefer if you deny, make no mention of them outside of this office. Or rather, I would just prefer it. Consider it an order from the highest levels of our government. I understand. I'm very no, you trustworthy. Don't. You fucked up immediately when you walked into my office. You're reading those right now. Have you seen these? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Don't ask me about those. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Dun, dun, dun. Bird. A bird can barely fit in its cage. Mm -hmm. Here oh my is God. Genshin Asugi. <laughs> I turned him into a bird. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. What the fuck? Weirdo. Dun 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 dun. to leave my office you're too stupid can you please get the fuck out the desk yeah the oh. desk itself have one no something yeah. there was something okay. i saw i think that's just the entirety of the back wall guess i'm fucking crazy oh no okay right well thanks for your time And remember, don't tell anyone about that thing I told you about. Oh, you mean about the papers? 
fucking... Where were we going? Uh, to find Gory? Uh... Did you have maybe? to talk to Shoms to give him... He could tell his papers? Oh yeah, I guess I didn't do that. But like, fuck Shoms. <laughs> but... I mean, it's for... it's... oh yeah. I can't examine. Yeah, so. but we also have to go see Gory. Jais, mm. you might have to go to um the prison. Not the prison, the uh whatever the fucking the, the, what's his name? Strongheart's place. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, would you like to to be like Kazuma no, it's okay. Or... I'm right. chilling. You will continue with the trial exactly as I instructed. Is that clear? Unless Perfectly. you find it annoying to switch uh, voices. Eh, I mean, like, I just, I just don't want you to be sitting the whole time. I don't mind. Defying Lord Strongheart by the sound of it, he never did know when to back down. Asugi, kill. On your way now, Asugi, my lord. Get out of my school. <laughs> Kazuma. <laughs> Man, what's your fucking problem? He left without saying a word. Well, it's good you didn't give him to me then. <laughs> yes, what are you doing here? Oh! Uh, for some reason, we're here to bother you. I'm not sure why. I wanted Van Zeke's trial concluded today. But Prosecutor Osagi's unwelcome inquiries are going to make it take longer than necessary. Unwelcome inquiries? As a result, I'm losing even more precious time. Currently 2 hours, 55 minutes and 41 seconds. 42. 43. Then we must resolve everything before three hours have passed, Mr. Narahodo. In a miraculous not even five minutes? Anyway, I can't let the man's obvious bad mood put me off. I need information. How are you? How you doing today? Say, say, have you ever heard of the Asagi papers? <laughs> I hate you so much. Don't. Does Professor Osage believe that Lord Van Zeke's sister is the Reaper? Professor? No. I wouldn't know. It was ten years ago. Oh, that was it? fateful closed trial that Lord Van Zeke's made a name for himself among the judiciary. But the next trial he fought, he lost. It meant the ringleader of a criminal organization was acquitted, thanks to all the jurors being under duress. But that's awful. The man's freedom was short-lived. He lasted just three days. Yes, let me see. He died in a rock slide at his place of work, I believe. A rock slide in London? <laughs> in his place of work, yes. He was a professional rock climber. <laughs> Um, that was the inauguration of the Reaper of the Bailey. And people believed Lord Van Zeeks was responsible. He has oh, telekinesis. <laughs> <laughs> he was brought to trial himself, but it was shown to have been an accident. Or a rock slide? So he must have had a solid alibi then. I hate rocks. Oh, he had a solid alibi. I dare say it was rock solid. Kills you. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, the mysterious deaths continued. In total, 16 persons perished in unusual circumstances, ostensibly at the hand of the Reaper. Damn, that is a kill count. That's a long run of coincidences. Well, the Reaper's true identity may well be revealed by this trial. And the impact of that revelation would have on the British public cannot be understated. Is that why it's a closed trial? Precisely. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> this country hasn't seen a closed trial for ten years. Really? You know why. 
Ten years seems familiar. So the <sighs> last one was the professors, the trial of Genshin Asagi. Ah oh, yes, yes the, ten... oh yes, the trial, the trial for Asagi, Asagi's trial, that trial. Yeah, it's the one from ten years ago that involved the death of Clint, my brother, Van, Van Zeke's brother. <laughs> Correct. Actually, we heard that originally. <laughs> You were going to... Oh, we heard that originally you were going to prosecute that trial yourself, Lord Strongheart. Van Zeeks entreated me to relinquish the prosecution to him, that he may avenge his brother's death. And here we are, ten years later, with the son of the man Van Zeeks had condemned now looking to avenge his father's death in the same way. We do say what goes round comes round. However... <laughs> It would. Oh, well done. Hmm. However, it would seem that the new young prosecutor is harboring some ulterior motive as well. Cosma is. I like my organization to run smoothly in exact Your organization, manner. you say? Yes. As with the giant clock in here, I won't tolerate a single cog being out of step with the others. Ah, so that's what all the gears are about in here. My man has OCD. If the young man refuses to mesh with the other parts of my great machine, I will be forced to take steps. And I hate tap dancing. <laughs> but oh, I'm but quite you're so good. good at it. Look at you go. Thank you. Yes. Well, what do you mean? Not something with which you need concern yourself. In any case, all your questions will be answered tomorrow. Be. So fuck off. Leave me alone. Now, I shall have to ask you to excuse me. As of this moment, I've been delayed from attending my next meeting by precisely three hours. Oh my, that is a long time. And I hold you entirely responsible. Even though we miraculously managed to fit everything into not even five minutes. Um, I wonder if you might agree to us some talking with... Prosecutor Asagi, why do you- you don't need fucking permission. Oh, you do. Discussions between the defense and the prosecution outside the courtroom are generally frowned upon. However, I will make an exception in this case. Now go. go. I be find, free. <laughs> you can find him in his office. Go. Get out of here, you dumb animal. <laughs> wow, that expression- his hand. Before. He very much had the expression of no bitches. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Let's go see him at once, Mr. Norohoro. We can finally fucking talk to him and show him this stupid paper. Kazuma's my best friend in the world, but... You know, you're gonna go up and you're gonna show him the paper. He's gonna be like, how do you have this? I already have this. And you're gonna see that it's a double. I'm not really sure that I know how to talk to him at the moment. If we are prevented from having a real conversation with Kazuma, I'm gonna lose my mind. Here, Yam, do you want to be Kazuma? Okay, fine. <laughs> so, this is the pros the office of Prosecutor Asagi now, is it? He stole Benzitsu's office! Kazuma Summers doing so well for himself, even though he's being a jerk. He took my room! He kept the bats, though, even That's though nice. he's always forced himself to kneel on the floor, Japanese style, in that dark corner. It's his habit to sit Caesar style wherever he's working. I hate my knees. Kazuma. I thought it wouldn't be long before you paid me a visit, Rienosuke. But insanely, it's been like a week. I was right about what I said, wasn't I? Sorry? That you have all the makings of a great defense lawyer. Well... I always believed that you'd fulfill your dream of advocating in the British courts. Just never imagined for one second it would be as a prosecutor. Seeing you stand in a foreign courtroom so gallantly realizing your dream, Kazuma Summer, I'm truly happy for you. I'm truly thankful to you, Judicial Assistant Mikotoba. Inosuke. We'll talk later. 
I always thought it would be fun for you and I to shake up the British legal system a little together. You know, invo like get some get some laws overturned. Like, oh, I don't know, just uh, randomly picks one off his desk that's been circled in red ink. This law where a man can't marry another man, so gauche. I think we should get rid of it. Just no reasoning behind it. Just <laughs> where's the logic? <laughs> Isn't quite how I envis envisaged it, but I suppose it's just another twist of fate. I've learnt a lot of things during my time in London, about how Sisato's father was himself a visiting student here once, along with Judge Jigoku, and about what happened with your father. And you'll have no difficulty understanding why I had no choice, why I had to find a way to get to Britain as a visiting student myself. I want to hear it from you, Kazuma. As you wish, Ryunosuke Nagahodo. As Lord Van Zeeks's incredibly stylish desk. <laughs> it's not my style, though. Mm. Mm. No, I notice you've been working at the little table on the floor, kneeling down Caesar style. Thought it was some kind of punishment set up by Lord Van Zeeks when I first saw it. I find it the most comfortable way to work. I can't do it. After a couple of minutes of sitting with my legs folded under me, they start to go tingly. Don't exaggerate, Ryunosuke. We both know you can't even manage a minute. <laughs> what?! <laughs> wow. Oh, yo, these two? Oh, they're friends. <laughs> they're friends. History will remember them as friends. Good pals. We best both was. know you can't even manage a minute. <laughs> Man, when, uh, when, when chat was like, uh, click the get the desk, it has the gayest dialogue in the entire game. I, I didn't believe it would be nearly that gay. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Lord Van Zeeks's fine collection of hollowed chalices and bottles all neatly lined up. Yes, he's extremely particular about all that. He has a strict regime for everything, from the storage of the cast to the bottling of their contents. Gosh, he must have really been having a tough time of it being his apprentice. Actually, no. Oh? He's so particular about it, he refuses to let anybody else touch any of it. So, it's been quite easy for me, in fact. Talk about weird. Talk about weird. Oh my god, that's so weird. It's so fucking weird. God, we know you can't even manage a minute. What the? Okay. It's a scale model of the crime scene. Uh, yes, I realize that. Does the prosecution office make a model of the scene for every single case? Apparently so. Oh, sorry. Sometimes it helps me to visualize things better and notice things you haven't spotted before. Actually, the miniature notice board is my work. Be honest, you enjoyed making that. Hmm. Little, little freak. Yes. <laughs> With his miniatures. Who's that, that guy? I don't know. That's his brother, Clint. Do you know who the man in the portrait is? Yes. <laughs> it's his brother, Clint. No, why would I? What? But you're Lord Van Zeeks' apprentice, and his brother is Clint! <laughs> yes, apprentice, not friend. And during oh. the time I was suffering from amnesia, I didn't even notice that picture. What do you mean? Oh, really? I mean, it's not the smallest picture. I can't believe we're not friends. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the first idea what the man decorates his office with. <laughs> The bear. The bear. The bear. Ah! Ah! You disturbed the bats, did you? Being companions of Lord Van Zeeks, wouldn't you say? Actually, I've seen things flying in Lord Strongheart's office too. Doves, I think. Perhaps you have to like birds to obtain rank in the judiciary here. Although, bats aren't birds, of course. How about a sparrow for you? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing. Sorry, I was thinking out loud. I hate candles. 
Oh, <laughs> casks floor to ceiling, just like the last time we were here. Hollowed barrels, I suppose. Hallowed. Arranged according to vintage, flavor, and region. Every week, they're all taken out and put back in order. What? Every Bro, he week? goes through that every week? The fancies can't oh. seem to settle on the perfect way of arranging them, you see. Oh! Vintage, oh, he's... And... I see. Vintage, flavor, and region don't neatly coincide. That's the trouble. Gosh, being his apprentice must be a real challenge. Same bit as Actually, no. Oh, we, we lost the end of that conversation. It was the same it, as the other one. Like, yeah, oh, it was, yeah. okay. It's getting on for a year now. What? What? <laughs> it's getting on for a year now. We know it hasn't been at least a minute. <laughs> since what happened on the SS Burya, and almost ten years since we were heading across the oceans from Japan to Great Britain. When the dumbest case happened, when a bizarre section of coincidences, understatement, led to those tragic events, I thought I'd lost my best friend forever. I must have been unconscious for a long time. When I awoke, I was lying on a bed was a narrow little room that was a posy of flowers by the pillow. It took me a while to realize that I was in the cabin of a ship. I slipped out of the room and headed up onto the deck. Were you already suffering from amnesia at that point? Yes. I didn't know what had happened or where I was. It was just this voice in my head. You have something you have to do. Something no one else can know about. Go to Great Britain. Your task awaits you there. Don't forget. It was a calling I couldn't ignore. It compelled me relentlessly. Out on deck, I saw that I was on a huge steamship and that we were docked in a large port. It must have been... Oh, Hong Kong! Yes, it must yes, have been. It... I'm Ryanosuke. I am Presum... sorry. It's okay. Presumably, <laughs> just, be... <laughs> just before they were due to carry your body off the ship. I had no idea of the situation, but I did have the feeling that this was in some way my last chance. So I concealed myself among the disembarking passengers and went ashore. And I disappeared into the crowded streets of that foreign port city. So I could plan my onward journey to Great Britain. With no money and no food. <laughs> Just under a year ago, when all my past memories lost to me, I was left behind in Hong Kong. Everything was foreign to me. The sights, the sounds, the smells. My head reeled. I was truly at a loss. I realize now that I'd escaped as a dead man. With nothing but the clothes on my back. No money, of course. Oh, how terrifying for you. Luckily, though, I had two feathers in my cap. One, One being... being... Oh. Well, again? I'm sorry. One I'm being sorry. your knowledge of English, I suppose. That's right. And on the back of that, I was able to pick up some work as a deckhand on a cargo ship. Eventually, after calling at countless ports, I finally arrived at Dover. That must have been some three months ago now. Your formidable tenacity of purpose showing itself again. I mean, the man had lost his memory and had literally had nothing to his name, but he still managed to make his way to London on the opposite side of the world. Of course, I had no idea why I'd moved to heaven and earth to get here at that point. So, how did you end up becoming Lord Van Zeeks' apprentice, then? That can only be called as extraordinary stroke of luck, really. You see, I was stopped at the border because I had no papers. They took me straight to Scotland Yard. And by sheer coincidence, Lord Strongheart was there to attend a meeting. That's when the second feather in my cap came into play. Would that have been your knowledge of the law? Why would I have remembered that? Yes, exactly. Yeah, why would you have remembered that? Mm. Well, Strongheart was curious about an Easterner with intimate knowledge of British law. Ah, yes. Many of the uh, involuntary actions your body remembers how to do, even without memory. Breathing. Being able to control your heartbeat. British law practice. <laughs> took me back with him to the Supreme Court and assigned me to the prosecutor's office. 
And then, nine days ago, nine days ago, you finally got your memory back after the trial involving Trevor. Hey, I'm, I'm not over the fact that they gave him a mask, and the reason for that was, well, we don't want Van Zeke seeing your Asian eyes. It's just like, that's the worst thing you've ever written, Shu Takumi. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Oh, wait. Present is a separate thing. Forget it. Ever since I first met you at Yumei, you talked about your dream. I want to kill all the Brits. <laughs> Mark my words, Ryunosuke. I'll be chosen as a visiting student and make my way to the Great Britain someday. THE Great Britain! The one! Did you know the entire time about what happened to your father here? Sixteen years ago. That's not ten years ago. When my father left on the on that exciting trip to Great Britain, he was just a boy. We took a photograph together the day before his departure. It's my last memory of him. But what I remember most about my father is his unswerving sense of justice. Six years after he left, a gentleman called at our family home. He told me that Genshin, my father, been taken ill in England and passed away. It was Professor Mikotoba, my father's Susato son. Oh my! Ever since then, the professor was very good to me. He even helped to fund my university education at Yumei, be forever in his debt. But nevertheless, I just couldn't bring myself to believe what he told me. Yeah, he is a chronic liar. <laughs> then one day, a letter arrived at our house from Britain. Uh-huh. There was no indication of the sender, so I opened it assuming it was from an old acquaintance of my father. What I read in that letter changed my entire life. What did it say? You can obtain Ray-Ban sunglasses for the low, hmm. low pre- <laughs> It said that my father had been a mass murderer, and that the writer cursed the Asuki name. Oh no. As a result of that letter, I found out what had been hidden from me all those years. Oh my god. Presumably the letter was sent from a relative of one of the victims. Probably not. If whoever it had been... If whoever it was had been a member of the judiciary, he could have been present at the close trial. The letter revealed that my father had been sentenced to death, executed for being a killer. I'm so sorry you had to find out that way. Imagine the British government did its very best to silence whoever sent that letter. But someone who knew the truth and couldn't bear the resentment was always going to be a problem. But still, it it could have been written by anyone. Why would why would you believe such a thing? It was a newspaper cutting included with the letter. It was the first I'd ever heard of the professor in his terrible killing spree. Well, what did my father have to say about the letter? I couldn't bring myself to show it to him. What? Why not? Because he deliberately concealed the truth from me by telling me my father was taken by a fatal illness. And I forgot. I couldn't have been easy for him. And he'd done it out of consideration for my feelings. So instead, I showed the letter to Judge Jigoku. Ah. To the other visiting student. He faltered for the briefest of moments, but then he just laughed the letter off. And in that moment, I saw it on his face. He was undeniably shocked, shaken momentarily before recovering his poise. <laughs> a year later, my bereaved mother succumbed to a strain of grief and she too passed away. That's when I made up my mind. One day, something. I would cross the seas of Britain and seek the truth for myself. The truth about my father, Genshin Asugi. And I wouldn't let anyone stand in my way. Oh, Kazuma something. Rip to Kazuma, but I'm different. I would have told my best friend about this up front. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like my best friend was part of this conspiracy. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid that if I... That would be fine. 
What we learned today in court turned things completely on their head. Someone in chat and his brother, Clinny. Clint, Clint. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> It was an impressive piece of lawyering, Yunosuke Naruhodo. Lord Van Zeeks isn't the Reaper, you know. I almost don't want to believe it myself. But it turns out that Inspector Gregson himself, the victim, was... It's clear that the Inspector was behind the Reaper's activity all along. Is it that clear? What? You mean, you knew? The real question is, who's been giving orders to the Inspector? Yes, Baruch Van Zeeks is the real Reaper. Why would he do that? And I know that ten years ago, it was him who decided my father must be a mass murderer and sent him to his grave. Good comment in chat. Listen, he doesn't have the headband squeezing his brain making him smart anymore. <laughs> so stupid. No, he was merely seeing that justice was done as the law dictates. He's not to blame. Ultimately, it's people who condemn people. The law is just a tool that they use to do it. And when a man condemns another, he must take responsibility for his actions. Of course he must. But I know for certain that my father would never have taken another man's life. Except he admitted to doing that. Reem. On the contrary, my father's life was taken by the Reaper. Man, Kazuma, I kind of wish you died on that boat. You used to be cool before you tried to be important. You used to be cool, but then Kazuma did weed. <laughs> Kazuma, what do you mean? I have apparently nothing to say about what? this. What? what? Kazuma, this is your armband. Oh, we you can talk about the fucking it. armband, but not the eye. Right. Actually, I think it's yours now. Sorry? You're the defense lawyer. You have a talent for it. I've always known that you would. And now you've chosen to take that path in life. Meanwhile, I've chosen to take the prosecutor's path. Or should I say, Ace Attorney Investigations 2, the prosecutor's path. As your friend, I couldn't be happier for you. Or more proud. Could you show it? Reem. No. No, you they didn't even... activate my smiling portrait this time. Sorry. I knew you couldn't be happy for at least a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so you keep a hold of that. Besides, I'm a prosecutor now. That armband would have no meaning for me. Well, if you're sure. Thank you, my friend. Rienoski, you're such a wet noodle. <laughs> All right. Here, hold these. <laughs> <laughs> I would have for the joke, but I was like, I honestly don't want to skip through another thing of dialogue. Ooh, All right. man, I'm going to be real. This is kind of taking a dive. I don't I don't like the Cosmo shit at all. <laughs> you sure we've asked everything we need to. OK, that implies that I need to show him something. Oh, why don't you show the will again? <laughs> Can you imagine if you had to show it twice? Uh, we have. Oh. Um, uh, maybe the autopsy report and be like, hey, does this look fucking wrong to you? Oh, we do need to find a way to speak with um, Gory, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I wish Hugh Takumi was better at writing protagonists because kind of the original sin of Ace Attorney, uh, it's because it's kind of the original sin of Ace Attorney, aside from constantly trying to recreate Edgeworth. Yeah, if I had to pick one, one like consistent stop doing this, it's you already made Miles Edgeworth. I got it. You don't need four of him. <laughs> this came up in the trial, didn't it? As something a little dubious, I mean. The fact that no time of death was recorded on Inspector Gregson's autopsy report. Is this really how you're supposed to trigger Gory appearing? That's very obtuse. That's some Ace Attorney 1 shit. Hmm. I mean... Uh, yeah. Yes, there were some unexpected turns in the courtroom earlier. 
The suggestion you came up with certainly took everyone by surprise. The idea that the victim died the previous day at some other location is quite something. Well, considering when the pocket watch had stopped and the scorch marks on the candle, it's certainly a distinct possibility. The evidence and the scene both point to it. To be honest, it bothered me too. So I paid a visit to the autopsy room earlier. The coroner responsible wasn't there. I got a name. It's Dr. Glory. Um, if it wouldn't trouble you, Kazuma-sama, we'd very much like to speak with the coroner too. I do not have any authority or rank in here and have only been here for a month as an assistant intern. And I've only had my memory for less than a week. But yeah, Can I can do that. Real quick. Of course. The last thing I want is for anyone to be brushed under the carpet. It'd be so bad. <laughs> Someone your autopsy laboratory is behind Logate Cemetery. Logate Cemetery? By Barclay Prison, you mean? Ten years ago? The professor case. Guys, please. Oh, you know it, do you? The prison where my father was incarcerated and robbed of his life. You've heard of that? Who is this constant reminder writing for? Because we are playing this a fifth of a case at a time, a week of a part every time, and it is way too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We'll play a visit to the laboratory later today. Good. Do you need me to show you where it is? Do you need directions to Barclay Prison in case you forget the name? <laughs> Lowgate Cemetery is behind it. Did you know my father was buried there and killed? <laughs> That's really fucked up. Anyway, I want to thank you. <laughs> for, <laughs> for listening for to this bullshit. For listening and remembering where my father was. You do remember that, right? I don't know, I'm getting I'm getting some signs we might have been expelled. I was expelled because of you. <laughs> you safeguarded the soul of the Asugi clan. That's a sword. My only slight regret is that I never got the chance <laughs> to draw it before I returned it to you. Karma is said to have been forged by a master swordsmith during the Sengoku War and States period. I come from a long lineage of warriors, many of whom were expert swordsmen. Well then, you a chip off the old block, I'd say. I think you're missing a chip off the old block. <laughs> this blade, Karma. Did I tell you it was called Karma? Well, it's called Karma. It's a symbol of the Asugi clan's honor as a might. Asugi. You might say, it is the soul of the Asugi clan. Asugi, that Karma. reminds me of someone. Not just you, was there someone else named Asugi? That's right, Genshin Asugi, the professor. Genshin. <laughs> My father. He died ten years ago. He died thanks ten to years the Reaper. <laughs> to the Reaper. It's like a room full of Furbies interacting oh like activating each other with their own noise. Like like did the writers suddenly have a situation where the producers came in and were like, Hey man, this needs to be this long and like a kid who doesn't know how to write an essay was like, Well, I gotta hit five pages. So they, they just fucking God. You see, what happened is they were like, all right, QA testers, tell us how you like our game. And they brought in the guy from Memento who can't remember or form new memories at all. And they're like, well, <laughs> shit. <laughs> anyway. Apparently, oh. one of my father's apprentices even took the blade's name as a surname. I, I read it beforehand. Sorry. Really? Karma. Wait, hang on. Ugh, all right, whatever. Really? Yeah. Karma. It does sound formidable, that's sure. Sixteen years ago, when my father was a visiting student here in London, do you remember that? <laughs> he had this sword forever at his side. Which is why it means so much to me that I have it by my side again now, too. Cool. And that is all thanks to you. It was an honor. Man, I hope he's the one that's dead in the next case so we can investigate. Actually, yeah. I would like that, no joke. Now, I have preparations to make for tomorrow. Perhaps I said a little too much. You said a yeah. few things too many times. Cosima, you've changed, man. We liked you before. 
No, Ryunosuke, I haven't changed at all. It's you who's changed. No, Whoa. you haven't changed. Whoa. Cool Uno reverse card. <laughs> I can completely understand your resentment of Lord Van Zeeks given what happened. I still can't. I have no idea why you think Van Zeeks fucked over your dad. Like, he took the prosecution case, but like, it was a fucking kangaroo court. Like, that dude was getting yeah. guilty. That was his first case, too. They were like, sure, yeah. kid, go ahead. It doesn't matter what warm body stands behind this. They were gonna prosecute him anyway. Would you be after Strongheart with the same fervor? I guess. I guess. Because it's just a warm body to blame, huh, Kazuma? But so full of justice. But the fact is, those events in this case are, well... Unrelated. Is that what you want to say? How can you be so sure? What do you mean? Never mind. Thank you. That man is the Reaper. And it's for that reason that the Inspector was killed. I'm going to prove as much in court tomorrow, by whatever means necessary. <sighs> Can't let you do that, Kazuma. Kills him. Please. I know you'll do what you have to do as a lawyer. Yeah, it's his job. But I'm, sure I, but I'm sure I don't need to tell you that I won't be taking any prisoners in the courtroom. Oh, great. So you're acquitting him. Wait, what? No, fuck, I've been defeated! I would expect nothing less. Until tomorrow, then. In the old Bailey. They Doesn't continue. leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... Alright, here's our dessert, please. guys, after that horrendous Nine. meal. Oh, 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 so cute. Please. She redecorated. I'm begging oh. this. I, Lord in heaven, I'm begging you to make Knock this character on, good. Just don't make her gross. Make her, like, fun crazy and not gross crazy. Please. Please. Give me this. This place. It's really creepy, isn't it? Well... But in the dead room, it's probably full of the spirits of the dissected. What? But actually, there's a rather pleasing scent of roses in the air. Well, being a dead room, the coroner probably needs a bold scent like that to mask the order of death. You are making me cry, Iris. Oh. <laughs> um, Iris, do you think we could change the subject? No. Face, face the reality of the world. That's you sh sharpening knives. What was that? She's hiding mm. under the table. What do you mean, what was that? You didn't see her? Uh, mm. Dr. Gory? What? Um, that noise before. How old are you? I think she's like 19. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how the timeline lines up. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> That's... Oh. Look, look at this fucking Civ drawing. Oh. oh, she's lovely! I am in love. I was sharpening my tools. I'd be dead meat if I didn't keep a perfectly keen edge on them. Right. When following the collagen fibers of the dermis, an expertly sharpened scalpel cuts like cheese. Would you like a demonstration? I want to turn Siv up so I can hear him more for this performance. Let me just let me just you're, you're... Oh, Yes, please, I'd love to see. Then, I think you'll do nicely. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't do nicely at all. I mean, maybe some other time. Hmm. What? Did you touch me? Well, we came here to ask questions, so... <laughs> Freak, I love her. Butterfly, butterfly! Um, we actually have met before. I I'm a lawyer, if you remember. You're not dead yet. What? So Mama said I wasn't to cut you open. She's so strict about things like that. Well, good. Dr. Scythe has some <laughs> scruples, at least. And scalpels. Oh dear. It looks like she's not interested in talking to us, for the time being, anyway. For the time being? You mean until we die? I hope that's a way off. Hmm. Sorry, but I wasn't planning on dying anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Surely there's some less dramatic way of making her listen. 
Oh, right. It drives me crazy that this is a separate menu. Dr. Gori, we actually came here to ask you about this. Hmm. He was very good. <laughs> good? Sorry? His skin didn't snag my blade once, and very little mess. His joints dislocated easily, and his muscle tissue was a pleasure to work with. We can skip those details. But there is one skipped line of dialogue. There is one thing about the report that's caught my attention. Uh, you don't seem to have reported a time of death. Hmm. That's not my fault. Oh! That made me Oh no, she's cute! Then please, tell us what happened! She- the way she doesn't- she looks like a- specifically a Zelda a character from one of the, um... The... not Wind Waker, the Toon Link games on the mm -hmm, DS. Mm -hmm, the way mm -hmm. her head moves and her Yeah, blinking. the way it bobs, you're right. So, why doesn't this autopsy report include the victim's time of death, then? It's really the most crucial detail. I was told not to write it. What?! By whom? Male Strongheart, the Lord Chief Justice. He came here. Lord Strongheart came? He <laughs> said that from the witness statements about the gunshot and the other evidence, it was obvious. Call me. <laughs> Just enough. The man clearly died at 5pm on 1st November when the gunshot was heard. But that's not the time of death you wrote on the report. You didn't write anything. Was there... Some reason you didn't include it? Mm. Dr. Gory, if you're hiding something order under Lord Strongheart's instructions, then sooner or later, you're going to go the same way as your mother. Wow, a bold thing to say to this girl. Give it here, then. Mm hmm? What's she scribbling so furiously? Eat Fuck shit you. and die. <laughs> I will kill you. you you've there. written... What? What's she written? Tell us! Indeterminate. <laughs> <laughs> but... It's very funny, honestly. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Why was the time of death indeterminate? When the specimen was brought in, it was still fresh. So the time of death could easily have co coincided with when the gunshot was heard. But... There was one small discrepancy. What discrepancy? There was some fried fish in the pocket of the specimen's overcoat. And that fish had started to rot. What? If the victim liked fried fish, he presumably liked to eat it before it went off. Well, yes. What are you trying to say? It's possible that someone tried to manipulate the apparent time of death. Manipulate the... Is that even possible to do? Theoretically, if you were to chill the body in ice, you could delay the onset of putrefaction. Oh, so I love you as this character. <laughs> I'm having a fun! <laughs> <laughs> and if the overcoat wasn't on the body at the time... Then only the fish would have started to rot! With today's science, it's not yet possible to determine if the body was chilled or not. But today's science is advanced enough to let you freeze a corpse, it seems. But surely, to chill a corpse like that would require an enormous electrical refrigerator. And I don't imagine many households in London are equipped with such a device. No, definitely not. But maybe in a factory, or some other special places? I don't recall seeing any factories as such like on Fresno Street, though. Hmm, I wonder, if the inspector's body had been chilled somehow, what might the actual time of death have been? I couldn't say for sure. But at the most, it might have been a day earlier. No. In other words, it would corroborate your previous deduction, Mr. Narodo. That Inspector Gregson was killed a day before his body was discovered at a different location. Did you inform Lord Strongheart of this possibility? He simply said that there were no electrical refrigerators that of that size in the vicinity. I feel like this is a character who escaped Leighton versus Ace Attorney mm -hmm. and managed to sneak mm -hmm. off into a better game. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Oh, yes, one other thing. It's something the governor of Barclay Prison told us. He said that your mother, Dr. Scythe, was responsible for confirming the death of the pro professor after his execution. The professor? Apparently, you always enjoyed listening to your mother's stories about her work, so we were wondering if you might know something about what happened ten years ago. That's not all Mama did. Sorry? My mama carried out the autopsy of Clint Van Zeeks as well. Her eyes are sparkling! <laughs> <laughs> what? Really? The brother of Lord Van Zeeks? The professor's final victim? In the case ten years ago? The culprit Against of the was, professor? was purportedly Genshin Asagi, who is in I'm prison. shitting are they and like, Are they, like, afraid that there's too many names in this game or something? I don't know. The idea of carrying out an autopsy on a member of the aristocracy was completely unthinkable back then. But the detective in charge of the investigation insisted, and it was miraculously authorized. That detective being Inspector Gregson, of course. Quite an accomplishment for one man. That autopsy provided the vital clue needed to arrest the killer. What was that, by the way? And Mama was there for that historic event. What does this all mean? You know, that amazing autopsy happened right here in this very room. <laughs> Never mind. The Professor and Clint Van Zeeks. They both spent their final moments before their burial on that dissection table there. Ew, you haven't got a new one in ten years? So this lab, Mama's lab, was the instrument- was instrumental in some of the country's most important events. She really is proud of her mother. I wonder if you'd like me to remind you that I jailed her. <laughs> if you'd like <laughs> us to tell more- uh, if you'd tell us uh, more about then that happened. Ten years ago! Go away. This is how I stand in my kitchen, and this is my idol. <laughs> Sharpening your eyes, donka donka donka. The professor's execution was Mama's first big case. She had to be in attendance at Barclay Prison's execution chamber. And sign the certificate to confirm the, con the convict's death. Mama is the best coroner in the world, you know. I was so proud of her. But the execution didn't actually take place. No, and worse still, Mama actually helped with the jailbreak. I didn't want to know. Oh dear, you found out recently, you mean? I believed in her, in Mama. But now I wonder if I'm sta starting down the same path as her. You mean because you omitted the time of death on this autopsy report? But that's because Lord Strongheart forbade you from including it. Just like Mama. I'm sure she was coerced by somebody too. You are surprisingly helpful already, by yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's my feeling as well. There's no doubt that there were powerful forces at play ten years ago. The execution couldn't have been staged without a lot of people at the prison knowing about it. Obviously. The prison governor must have been in on it as well. The big man with the little handcuffs? According to what he told us. He was tricked by the chief warden. He says they knew nothing about it. Of course he said that. I'd say the same thing. Just who was behind that jailbreak all of those years ago? God, I would kill for a game with her as, like, the main detective character who keeps showing up. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the autopsy of Clint Van Zeeks. It was at a time when carrying out autopsies of murder victims was very unusual. It's still not a practice that's observed in our country, even now. It turned out that he was the professor's final victim, and when the autopsy was performed... Mama was present, although only as the secondary assistant. The person leading the procedure was called Dr. John H. Wilson. That's right, my daddy! 
And there was one other person present. The primary assistant. Also named Dr. John H. Wilson. He was a visiting student from the Far East. Wait, a visiting student? It must have been my father, Eugene Mikotoba. I mean, it could have been Jigoku. I had no idea Professor Her dad's a doctor, though. Yeah, but Jigoku's evil. <laughs> I had no I idea Professor Mikotoba had been involved in something so important. But the outcome of that historic autopsy was the discovery of a vital piece of evidence that led to the capture of the professor. So that's how they came to identify Genshin Asagi as the infamous mass murderer. Do you happen to know anything about that piece of evidence? Can you tell us any more? So adorable. She's so cute. Would you like to see the records for yourself? W would, would that be alright? God, she's so helpful. <laughs> What's the point of keeping records if people can't look at them? Wow. This is very refreshing. <laughs> They're filed under V at the back of those cupboards. With the other records from that last decade. Thank you. I will sit here. Let's see. And I will make a little craft on my desk. Van Zeeks. Van Zeeks. Uh, that's strange. What, Mr. Narodo? They aren't here. But there's nothing under Van Zeeks. There must be. I know this is like ramping up to be like, someone stole the files, but wouldn't it be great if she's just like, oh wait, no, it would be under Z, because it would be under Z, because we wouldn't file yeah. Van Zeeks <laughs> under <laughs> that. <laughs> Perhaps somebody took them away? No. No one's allowed to take documents related to the Professor case out of this room. But you're right. They're gone. Well, when was the last time somebody looked at them? Do you remember? It was... <laughs> oh, yes. I remember now. It was two years ago. A Fucker. consulting detective came on one day saying he'd like to see the records. No. You, you don't mean... Herlock Sherman's is his name. Deep down, I knew that was coming. Do you think he stole the records? Oh no, surely not. Iris, that can't be right. Can it? Have you met Hurley? Uh, uh. Iris? I need something to line the cage of my new parrot pet. Oops, it died into the garbage. <laughs> No. I hope you don't mind, but... What is it, Iris? I just remembered something very important I have to do. Oh. I'm going to have to leave you now. That was interesting. She had, like... They, I like that they gave her a fake blushing forward. Yeah, spray. a fake smile. Oh, this is very sudden, Iris. Well, we'll come with you then. Uh, no, 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 there's no need. You and Rina can take your time here. Okay, well, you're 12 or 10, I think, actually, ten. so... Uh, bye for now, then. Good luck! No. Ten years ago. Whoa. Wait a minute, little girl. Hmm? Me? No, Ryanosuke. I remember now. You've been here before, haven't you? Uh... Have you, Iris? Yes, two years ago, when that detective came. You were here with him, weren't you? You were a living specimen then, too. That's the way it usually works, yes. Was I? I, I really don't remember. Anyway, sorry, a better mustache! Wait, Iris. Oh, sorry. I'll brew up a nice cup of tea! What's the matter with her? She's behaving really strangely all of a sudden. Well, in hmm. that case, we won't keep you any longer, either. It's been quite a while since I had any visitors. This was really fun. Oh my god, she's so cute. <laughs> Love her. This, this is like exactly the kind of character that I'm talking about when I, I get mad that it's like, I hate that only the original three Ace Attorney games get re-released and ports and those are the only ones anyone talks about. Because then, like, like, can you imagine if this character was in, like, Ace Attorney 1, 2, or 3? Mm -hmm. Like, everyone in the world would have seen art of her already. But next time you come, I'd prefer it if you were ready for dissection. Can't make any promises, sorry. 
It's a bit sad that the records of Clint and Clint Van Zeeks, the brother of Barrack, have disappeared. But I think we've asked all we came to ask now. I love her. She's so I cute. Love her. Little goth girl. Ah, a look she at has this. she has the same hairstyle as Tilly. I was gonna say she looks a lot like Tilly. <laughs> Straight bang, it's so cute. Bucket hair! In hair. You think we'd want to chase after Iris? Nope. I should probably be reading what Suzato is saying. Let's go here randomly. Oh, can't we? Ooh, box. Oh, that gun's still here. I can't read either. The police are still busily investigating in here, then. But Gina's nowhere to be seen, won't she? Yes. I don't want to voice her right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it has been blissfully quiet, hasn't it? Perhaps she's out investigating on her own, practicing what her boss taught her. Well, I suspect she'll be- uh, I expect she'll be back before too long. Shall we wait? Actually... There's something different about this room since we last came in here, isn't there? We could always use time to investigate a little more thoroughly. Is the fireplace clean? Uh, details of cases stretching like 10 years, blah, blah, blah. I don't think something, something. It's the fucking fireplace. <laughs> Look, the bricks in the top of the fireplace, they're like, they're rendered a little, not the top, but like the, uh, I, the lip not, at the bottom. It's not the fireplace. No? No, because oh. there's nothing to select there. <sighs> it won't let me click that. There we go. I did do that like 20 times. A photograph of Mrs. Vigil. Realizing the identity of this lady was a very great clue to exposing Mr. Gossip's true identity. Great clue. Great clue. Do, 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 do. loves his wife very dearly. Ringo Printing Company. Yeah, we can do it. Bum, 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 bum. Great surface. You couldn't tell her the truth about the great surface. Transformation was incredible, wasn't it? Just from that big twisted lip. Yes, he went to extraordinary efforts to play the part of Hugh Boone convincingly. Although it didn't really seem it like it was much of an effort to me. Hmm, now you say it, I have to agree. It's almost as if that was Mr. V I keep calling him, wanting to call him Virgil, Mr. Mm -hmm. Vigil's true character. People really are hard to fathom at some times. Okay. The box. Mm. This is Craig's and lunch. It's, it's all fish and chips. This little trunk wasn't here before, was it? I just assumed oh. that this was part of the investigation kit, to be it honest. It appears to be made of metal. It must be very heavy. That belongs to either Sholmes or Strongheart. I wonder to whom it belongs. There's some initials There's on some the initials. outside. Oh, you're right. That's you. Oh, it's Gregson's. It's his lunchbox. I was right. <laughs> Let's ask one of the policemen if they know how it came to be here. Oi, what do you think you're doing? Uh oh. Ah. Hey, Gina. That's my trunk, that is. And so. <laughs> Gina! What, what were you, where were you hiding? I don't know. You leave something unattended for a few seconds and every Tom, Dick, and Harry's got his greedy eyes on it. Just a wild guess, Gina, but, um... Oh, spit it out, Odo! Is it fair to say that you've only owned this trunk since this morning's trial? What? What are you trying to say? Come on, this trunk goes with me everywhere! Always has! Where you been the last year? Try not to incur, incur your wrath, mind, and <laughs> Poor <laughs> Hollywood! <laughs> okay. I guess we're talking to you now. You should hear them talking at the yard now. Because she should be ashamed of themselves. They're saying 
It's the boss who killed all them bludgers. Ah, uh, you mean that whole Reaper thing? Yeah. Apparently, the boss was investigating stuff that no one else at the yard knew nothing about. Stuff to do with all them criminals who got off scot free. Yes, the ones prosecuted by Lord Van Zeeks, who used bribery and corruption to evade conviction. Well then, obviously, it was that bloomin' Reaper giving the orders, wasn't it? But why would people be suspecting Inspector Gregson of being involved in the killings? There was a notebook in, in his office. Oh no! This doesn't sound good. <laughs> it had details about the crimes that had been pegged as the Reaper's work. No! Did you see it, Gina? Did you see the notebook? But they wouldn't blame and let me! Because I'm just an apprentice, apparently. Said there's a rule written in the front of the notebook. If Gregson don't kill someone every 13 days, he dies. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out if it's fake or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell if I know. It was me who <laughs> found it. <laughs> Maybe things will come to light sooner or later. <laughs> it was me who found it. And he was my boss. That's right. <laughs> yeah. What's that weird little that weird little side soup you're always eating? Misa soup or something? Like that. <laughs> Stop. God. <laughs> well, it's Ryuka, pretty, you. Pretty, it's, <laughs> I was pretty miffed about it. So. I sneaked a peek at what is said anyway. <laughs> to me, it was in chat. Very funny chat. <laughs> That's our Gina. Secret notebook. So you managed to see what was written in Gregson's secret notebook anyway, did you? The way I see it, it's my right to read what he wrote. And with it, uh, wh what he write? Dates. <laughs> Times, places, names. <laughs> um. <laughs> no long list of them. Um. Oh. <laughs> and ever since I touched it, I've been able to see this floating bloke. <laughs> <laughs> well, we really waited till the 11th hour to haul this shit out, didn't we? <laughs> All details about the blood is supposed to have been done in by the Reaper. But there could be an explanation for that. Perhaps it was d it was a record of the inspector's investigations into the Reaper's activities. Exactly! That's what I said! It's the first thing you'd think, right? And it happens, it was full of names I recognized anyway! Yeah, well, you are getting better at the exit. Aw, oh, thanks! Well, the Reaper's targets were almost exclusively known leaders of London's criminal underworld. Well, yeah, but there was one name right at the end that was a bit odd. At the end of the list, you mean? It'd be on birthday! <laughs> I'm pretty sure the date against it was 31st October. Oh! The day before the inspector was found dead! Oh, it was Halloween. Mm -hmm. So, what was the odd name? What, like, a name I've seen before? It was something like, um... Nah, it's no good. I can't remember it. I don't think it was an English name, put it that way. Oh dear, what a pity. Well, something else too. I don't know if it matters, but the same thing kept coming up over and over. Sheen, it was. I don't suppose it means anything, but... Did you say Shin? Eh? Look, does it mean something? Lord Van Zeeks knew the name too. He mentioned her as well. The woman who actually did the deeds. And now we find out her name appeared in Craigson's secret notebook. Oh no. We haven't seen you for a little while, have we, Gina? Well, it's not. I've been busy, ain't I? Investigating and that. The lads of the yard are trying to trace the boss's movements the day before it happened. Day before, that would be the undercover investigation into the Red Headed League, then. Well, the boss didn't go, did he? You found some cov what was pretend to be in, didn't you, Odo? Remember me from literally 20 minutes ago? Anyway, you ain't the only one turning up stuff. I've got my own ways of getting results. Gun! A oh. gun! 
when me and my partner uh, are good together, <laughs> there's nothing we can track down. Yeah, I'm blue screens for a second. Me and my partner. <laughs> e <laughs> <laughs> oh, little Toby. He's such a faithful friend. I'm the Sometimes real killer. <laughs> Sometimes reading for Gina is just like that. Uh, I get it. So, have you tracked anything down then? What do you think? Of course we have. I can tell you though. Police business, isn't it? Uh, isn't it? Isn't it? Every time the dog licks Gina, all I can think of is the Call of Duty, like, confirmed hit X and noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for the raid, Team Four Star, guys. Oh. Anyway, thank uh, you're you. I don't know why I started raiding for Gina. <laughs> anyway, the point is, if you lot ever need any help, you know who to turn to, right? Me and the L Hound here. <gasps> the L Hound? The L Hound! Shut up. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, he's more than sweet. He loves them too. Right. Because he looks so, oh, so hellish. Honest. Right. The hell happened? Go ahead and run around this crime scene. Uh, we're probably near the end of this. I mean, I don't know. I say probably. We're definitely going to stop soon, new raiders. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Sorry, probably going to be passing you somewhere else. We've been going a little over our three hour time. I'm hoping I can just sweep up this last investigation segment. Um, Gina, about your hellhound there. There he is again. Chief Inspector Toby, you mean? He's the pride of the force, he is. In Japanese, police dog means something quite different and not altogether nice to those involved in crime. But here in Britain, it's a wonderful compliment, it seems, for a canine at least. No, he ain't this little fucker. <laughs> well, it should be. Oh, hey, Toby, he done pissed on me loafers. <laughs> Toby fucked me wife. <laughs> <laughs> After all the <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that, Mr. Vigil. <laughs> <laughs> it was so. I don't know why I said that. Dogs I and love. You. No, shut up. I I think in my brain I meant that more as just like an insane like I'm furthering the bit in universe. Yeah, yeah, this I know. Isn't true. I know. <laughs> uh. It was Toby here who managed to locate Trevor's workshop. <laughs> Maybe it's time for another demonstration of what this super dog can do, eh? Do we? I actually don't know. What do we need to throw at him here? I love strategy guide wiki. Uh, maybe... Yeah, yeah it would be his watch, right? Things. Or... What were we looking I've... for? <laughs> the chief... Oh, uh, uh... Scooting, Shomes? scooting, scooting. Who are, yeah, who are we looking for? Shomes or Iris, Iris maybe? Iris, I guess, yeah. Uh, oh, okay, there's plenty of items that can do things. Sure. I don't know why I would. we would need to find Gregson. Well, Chief Inspector Toby, if you wouldn't have a, mind having a whiff of this. This is a very <laughs> cute pose. He might be a little too keen, don't you think? I love Star Trek. <laughs> the chief inspector the made strikes again. The chief inspector made short work of Gina there. The Reaper Fine. strikes again. Woof. Ah, look what he's gone to. Oh my! That trunk clearly still has a very strong scent of Inspector Grayson. In other words, it must have belonged to him. Oh, all right. It's a fair cop, I suppose. Cops you, aren't fair. And you finally got away with it. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> and you nearly got away with it, too. Okay, good. You always talk so proudly of the Chief Inspector Toby's nose and what it can achieve. Did it not cross your mind that he might identify something that was right next to us? That was a bit of a bloomer. I was a bit of a bloomer, weren't I? Yes, 
I I literally, it didn't even cross my mind to be like, we need to prove the cases the inspectors hand me down to Gina because like, obviously it was. <laughs> so it's like, what am I trying to prove? <laughs> That's enough. That's enough now then, Gina. Get out. <laughs> I think it's time you told us the truth about that trunk! Gina! Gina! It's his wife! What are you talking about? <laughs> I know it's both the end of yours! Hey, what happened? Alright then, what did happen? I'm completely lost in whatever this exchange is supposed to be. Well, I think... I think the implication is that she stole it from him. I don't know. Like I said before, we were trying to trace the boss's movements. So I let Toby have a whiff of the boss's overcoat. And as soon as he done that, went off like a shot. Straight to that sandwich. To a sandwich? Not to a bag of chips? Mr. Narahodo, I believe Gina means the witness. I was the killer. Oh, I forgot about that sandwich. I had it worked, and it worked. <laughs> yeah, I had it hidden between them wooden boards of his. The boss is drunk. Normally, no. I am a twerk. Today, I am a perp. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> you mean when they heard the sound like a gunshot and all piled in here? Exactly. He nabbed it from the scene. Goodness. Me and the chief inspector gave that sandwich a good grilling, and you know what he said? <laughs> I I love that the dog has like five frames of animation for the head. I, oh, you're right. Yeah, I think Beppo's wearing his coat. I thought it might fetch a good price, and the chap wouldn't be needing it anymore, so... But that's all I did, nothing but... Okay. And would you add in an eve the cheek of her? Stealing the dead boss's stuff to flog! You just took it down with him lying there, rings and all. <laughs> so Miss Venus wasn't the only one to me. I, if you guys ever want a free laugh from me, directly quote any line from uh, beside uh, besides like the most famous two or three from uh, A Christmas Carol. I don't know mm -hmm. why I find it really funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Miss Venus wasn't the only one to meddle with the scene of the crime then. How could they? Anyway, that's how it happened. And it's a pretty decent trunk, so I figured I might as well make use of it. Is there something wrong with that, huh? Well? Maybe you and Mr. Sandwich should try to find the answer to that question together. <laughs> I think perhaps that trunk should be turned over to the police, don't you? I am a police officer. <laughs> what are you on about? I am the police! But like, bigger police, taller police, you know? Gina, if you wouldn't mind, could we maybe examine it? Yeah, alright then. Do what you want with it. Oops, thank, thank you! you. Alright. <gasps> What's the matter with Toby? Why is he acting uh. so aggressively towards me all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Naruto, be careful! It must be the trunk! Ah! Oh my god! Ah! Game ah! over. Oh, wait, oi, what are you doing? You look like his face off! Mr. Naruto! Mr. Naruto! Gina, quickly, hail a carriage! Oh my god. Oh my god. Did, did you just get mauled by a dog? Turns out I got Hound of the Baskervilled. You died. <laughs> Oh my god. Me several times as a child. This is why I hate dogs. I fucking hate dogs. This is why I- this is literally why I hate dogs. Yes, no, like, <laughs> this is why I don't like dogs. <laughs> Miss Susato. Oh, here I am again! Hello! I oh, stole your to... kidney! Hey! <laughs> 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 they took my freaking kidney! <laughs> Thrall to drop dead after a mediocre licking by a small terrier? Most unseemly. <laughs> what is or isn't seemly irrelevant here, Mr. Sholmes? Dead. 
Game Boy, over. Based, based on where he fell, he cracked his head on that Head desk. on that chair, yeah. yeah. I'm so glad there's no lasting damage. How are you feeling? You look over at him, he's covered in dog fur. He is now half dog. I'm fine, thank you. Did you bring me back here? Uh, what's this on my head? A, a bandage? Sadly, we had no ice, so that's a compress of sugar water. I had to use all the ice I had at my disposal for another venture, don't ask questions. This is small mm -hmm. thing, don't worry about it. <laughs> sugar water? Is that literally gonna be relevant? Am I gonna be- Oh my god, it is. Don't worry, yep. Mr. Naruto, it's a first aid treatment that my father taught me. Okay. Oh, <sighs> thank you. So, let us take tea when you're feeling up to it. But of course, no sugar in the patient's cup. Ah, the bump on my head is throbbing sweetly enough, don't worry. <laughs> Whenever you feel ready, then. Okay, uh... He's standing behind me again. There's a, um, there's a... Stop right there, Mr. Shom section, apparently, next. So we're gonna call it here. Okay. Uh, All right. Wahoo! Wahooing! Don't care for the Kazuma shit, but I like the little goth girl. We did get that. We did get that much. All right. We earned it. So... <laughs> we ah. did. Um, I'm going to send people to stabbiness today. Okay. Okay. Raid stabbiness. The raid has been created. I don't know who's playing. I guess it's probably Jay. Get him. Get him. Give him kisses. Bye. Bye bye. Woof. Hum bum 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 bum. Ah, 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 spiders! Ah, spiders! Exactly. Uh, ah. All right. Welp. This case is going. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. It's a shame because, like, I I was kind of enjoying the rise of it. I was like, ooh, okay, this is this is like going places. It's, yeah, um, like all the, the fucking crazy shit with the redhead guys was funny yeah. as hell, this, and like that was this like... raw case itself doesn't really have any problems. I'm just we're hitting that moment where I'm like, ah, I'm afraid. I don't think. I'm going to like the explanation for most parts of the setup for this grand conspiracy and the characters' mm -hmm. positions in it, because mm -hmm. I don't like Kazuma's reasonings at all. I and I I think everything about how he got where he got when he got is very convoluted. I don't. I I'm not. I'm hoping there's an additional twist with Gregson. Because I just, mm. I just don't understand why he would do any of this, and it's just a weird thing to leave his character with posthumously. Um, and it's also not a very good secret evil detective twist since this series already did one of those. And yeah, it was yeah, a, a much yeah. better one. Um, and I don't know. I. It's wild how often they keep doing the 12 years ago bullshit. Like, it's, I think it's actually more egregious than it was in Investigations 2. <laughs> Same. All right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, I'm, thank you guys for reading. I'm going to go do work for for Epithet because I haven't gotten to in a couple days. Now I'm going to take a headphone break, then I'll probably hop in a rat cake for him. Bye. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, I'm bye. still streaming, aren't I? Bye.